Yeah, baby. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithms. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push our lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on to bigger banquets. Miss that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth day in here. Extra fruit, the brain. You can't move me, the music is man It's a con job, but this grand I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stink And yeah, it took some hard work, but blind up play a huge role And if they say that it don't, then they're feeding you fool's gold And if I know one thing, the truth's home Even if it's a tough thing to swallow An even harder thing to hold And truly know without a doubt while on the globe and even though that seems inherent It ain't always so apparent Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it But don't worry, it's a pretty February In a year with more to carry And more days is yet to come Under the sun taking the ferry to the city Where the moment's extra pretty Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain That isn't equal to the real world All that stress ain't saving me fear though I swear to God I'm trying But they pushing their demons down my esophagus Screaming the easy life, what I want always Praise made up holidays, tell me that love is the answer Just to boost this economy Buy more, sell now, but I ain't following I ain't a hollow man, I'm full of them fall winds Take it all with a tall grin And if you feel it, do it with me and just sing with the song, say it all for what it is what it is, what it is, what it is It ain't all so big Hello, hello, hello. Hey, y'all. It's me, SB. Dearly beloved. Guys, I hope y'all doing good tonight. Y'all know y'all know what tonight is. I am getting some feedback that sounds crazy. But anyway, I may be struggling streaming a little bit, but I'm sure that you all can hear me. If not, you're going to let me know in just about a second. But anyway, listen, y'all. It's Monday night, and y'all know what goes on on Monday night. It's time for that dynamic duo. In just a few minutes, we're going to bring them up. Black man, come on up here, sir. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? What it is, what it is, what it is. I'm telling yeah. you, it ain't yeah. all so big. Yeah, hey, come on, come on. Let's oh, yeah. What's Listen, going on, SB? It's, 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 all, it's, all about, it's all about God, y'all. Because guess what? That little fiasco that went on about two weeks ago, we got people everywhere, everywhere talking about God on a Sunday in the middle of the afternoon on YouTube. <laughs> on On Fight Club late at night, on Fight Club late at night on YouTube, guess what? People are being, uh, the Holy Spirit is at work. Hey, see, you know what? It ain't, it don't even matter how he come up. He came up, right? Yep. So even the anti-gods can bring him to, to, to pass. Because guess what? He God without all that. He don't need that. We ain't got to act. God don't need us. We need him. Man, you know what? Security boss, I, I went to church Sunday. It was amazing. Church was amazing on Sunday. And um, the pastor's sermon on Sunday was, shut up. Um, <laughs> and that was it. Uh, and he said that learning the art of shutting up. Because sometimes you run your mouth so much, you'll talk yourself out of your own blessing. God, oh, he preached that thing Sunday. But mm. yeah, I thought I would share that with you. It was called shut up. Man. Well, you know what? I, I agree. I do know for a woman is a lot of, there's a lot of peace in her being quiet, a lot mm. of strength in her being quiet and knowing when to be quiet. So that is that I, that would have to be a very strong message. And I wouldn't think it would apply to everyone, but I could see how it would work. 
Definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. So listen, how you how, listen, it's been a lot going on out here in this here big old crazy world. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get there soon because I know you've heard about the case with the young woman and her 14 year old boy. Yeah. yeah. We're going to touch on that in just a little bit also, because um, since it happened, I think it, the actual incident happened on June 18th. Mm-hmm. Um, but since then, she and her son have been um, all charges has been dimi- dismissed and she's now uh, just going back to doing her everyday thing. And we're going to talk about it because I, I think Mr. Boss got the video for us and we're going to look at it really quick. We're going to have a few opinions. I want to hear what you got to say. I'm going to try to take a little different approach to it because, you know, everybody, you know, it's that black woman's fault. And, you know, I'm sure that young man trying to, uh, that young man actually deleting somebody is very, very heavy. A few people have mentioned it, but we may need to touch on that a little bit more because that's another black man. Actually, that would be two black men that we've lost. The first one, you know how it go. You know, maybe yep. he got what he deserved. The second one, the 14 year old, I hate he had to do it. Hate he had to do it. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. But tonight, our topic is modern women won't revenge. Hmm. Can you imagine what this is about? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Before yes. we get started. Before we get started, let's say hello to a few people. Because you know what? They could have been anywhere, but they decided to join us tonight. So we gotta we gotta say hello. We got to. Who we got here? Corey, what's up? Dr. Steele, how are you? Marcus, it's good to see you. Christopher, hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. Salam. Salam, what's going on with you? We have not talked, but we got we got to understand what's going on in your private life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, built uh, black built like a conquering king. Hello, sir. How are you? How are you? So listen, if I take heed, what's up? It's good to see you. What's up? Take Thank heed. you so much for being here. Unconventional, unconventional one. It's good to see you. Hello, Mr. Gilbert. What's up for for be free for be free? Hello. I like that. <laughs> it's good to see you. Also, Dr. Steele, how you doing? Stanley, hello. So listen, I appreciate Sin7 Sin. Sin. Hello, young lady. It's good to see you. Listen, guys, I appreciate you all um, supporting me the other day over on Chaotic's channel. Yeah, I know from time to time I like to go out and say hello and visit a few other people just, you know, just for a... Yeah, I don't know. Just to get around, say hello to a few people. And I must say, those who visit me over here uh, at, at SB Nation, y'all are some of the most balanced people in the world. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I got some hair falling in my face. Praise the Lord for you guys. You are, are so balanced. I, I Chaotic is chaotic, but I appreciate chaotic. I ain't mad at him. He, he's saying some crazy stuff, but he's, cha- he's chaotic. LD, hello, how are you? But I have realized, Black man, that I'm going to say ours because a lot of people that are here with me are with you too. Right. We have such a balanced crew. I mean, you know, we can tell them something and they will actually give us something that we can think about. Mm. They were coming for me left and right over there. They were putting words in my mouth. I ain't never even thought about it. I'm like, huh? Did I do that? They were like, yeah, you women. You women. Hey, Clement, what's going on? Trey, what's up? Trey, Trey. I'm so glad that you're here, Trey, because, you know, we always need an officer in the building, even though you're ex-officer. We still need you in the building. But um, (laughs) what you say? Black built like a conquering king says what? Nah, I'm broken. You don't think you're balanced. I Listen. I don't believe you because I see you over here and I see your responses. The ruckus. What's going on? Revenge for what? You have to be wrong. You have to be wrong in order to want revenge and revenge against whom? It's, if it's because of the historical status of females, then you need to take that up with God. The historical status of females the ruck is you are taking us way too fast. I'm going to need you to slow down. You're just going way too fast. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Clement, what are you saying down here? Thank you for your $2 super chat. What are you saying? I can't see it. Mr. Boss, can you raise it up? BMU, you check out the email. Um, mm-mm. What is I that? Did, I, I did. I, I, will I, respond, I, I will respond to you, my brother. I did. I did check it out. Man, crazy, All right. crazy, crazy, brother. All right. Thank you so much for being here, Clement. And thank you for your super chat. All right, guys. So listen, I think we're going to do first is we're going to black man. Did you want to add something before before we get into it? What is since C7? You got my girl. 
thumbnail. So I, your girl, you know, since you ain't got to tell me, she, I knew she was your girl. I'm just kidding. But I felt like that, you know, the natural order, you would be able to help us out with this and, and tell us about the natural order of women being the leaders or in charge and yeah, giving like authority. Seeing, I know you're going to be able to help us out with this. It, Thank it's you not so gonna, much. It's, it's not going to be nice. It ain't going to be nice, Black Man? Why? We're going to tell the truth. And the truth ain't never nice to some people who can't accept it. Oh, but Black Man, it's all in what you believe, isn't it? Oh, man. Now, Ooh. I'm not saying that her, you know, it, her theory can't be disproven, but I'm just saying that if she believes this, then, you know, ain't nothing we can do with her belief, can we? Mm -mm. You know, maybe, is she, maybe. Is she, is she not married, is she? I don't know. Sensi, Sin, Seven, <laughs> can you let us know if you are married? But guess what, Black man? If she can convince us, just like this young lady on the thumbnail, if she can convince us, then maybe we... No, I ain't going to tell no lie. I ain't going to consider that. But maybe we can hear what she's mm -hmm. saying with open ears. Right. I'm willing to do that anyway, because, you know, I'm 10 toes down. I am. What's up, Trey? 10 toes down. Trey, what's up? But anyway, so listen, we're going to first start with the young lady, um, the 14-year-old boy and his mom in the restaurant trying to get a hot dog or two. And they were conf uh, confronted with an issue. And I just want we're going to play this a little bit. But before we get started, Black Man, is there anything you want to say, anything you want to touch on before we jump right into it? No, we could jump right into it. I would like to know what the ex-officer would have to say about the situation uh, if he were the arresting officer. Yeah, so um, you know what, Trey? I think I'm gonna have um Mr. Boss drop the link pretty quickly so you can tell us um, you know, in an informative way what would have been, you know, the thing to yeah, do. Proper. Um, because we are it, listen, all charges have been dismissed and all those little things that were allegedly done, all the text messages, all that stuff has now been dismissed and it was all a lie and all of that and all of that. So anyway, let's jump right into it. All right, let's pay attention. Go ahead, black man. Go ahead, Mr. Boss. Get your food. Who? Get the cup. Who? Hey, 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 hey. Get your food. Get your food. If you say one more thing, I'm gonna knock you out. Oh my God! I said one more thing, I'm gonna knock you out. Oh, 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 it's just totally unnecessary. But as you can kind of hear that they were having some sort of back and forth about getting your food. It almost appears, and this is just me adding this part. I don't know this, but it seems like maybe she might have gotten in front of him in line or something about that. But, you know, there were so many tales of what was going on. But I did hear her say, go get in the car because he said, get in the car. She was talking to her son. So all those theories about her texting her son and telling him to get the, the, the weapon out of the vehicle, that has, is, has appeared to be untrue. She actually told her son to get in the car. If y'all want to see back, man, you need to see that again. Listen to that again. Or yeah. did you hear her that, say no, it? No, he, he can play it again for the people. Let's that play just it again. Here. Let's slow down. We can't slow it down. But let's let's listen real close, y'all. Get your food. Get in the car. Who? Get in the car. Who? Hey, 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 hey. Get, get your food. Get your food. If you say one more thing, I'm gonna knock you out. Oh my God, I said one more thing, I'm gonna knock you out. Oh, he's oh, that one more thing, I'm gonna knock you out. Oh, 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 yeah. All right, so we all know what happened at the end. Y'all heard the power. But you know what, though? What was 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 mind bottling to me? It took that boy almost 10 seconds to shoot that man. That boy already had that gun coming in that store. Yeah, he did. They have, they have videos of him having it in his um, sweatshirt. He right, had it yeah. in his sweatshirt and he was fumbling with it in his pocket trying to get it out. But the point I was trying to make is there was a one scenario where she supposedly texted him and told him to get the gun. But I don't know. You know, it's hard to see. You're not seeing both videos, videos at the same time. But she told her son to go to the car because he said the young man said, go to the car. We heard mm -hmm. him say that. So there, there wasn't a time where she and I think this is why the the um, charges were dropped because all those rumors about her telling him to text him, her, you know, setting him up and doing those things that just turned out to be not true. She told her son to go to the car. Now he had his web that weapon on him and he shot that boy. 
And my thoughts was, I see it when I first heard it, I didn't know it happened like right then because I didn't hear. I was looking at a video without noise, but he he could have very well shot his mom. I mean, it, it was just it was awful. But Black Bear, what do you think about this video? Honestly. Um, oh man. Um my thoughts are he hit your mama, your mama survived that. I think about the what if isms. What if you what if you would have hit your mama? What if he would have hit that elderly black man standing in line? He was gonna hit him. He ran out, right? Or what if you would have hit one of the cooks, or the or the other cashier, right? It could have been bad on every levels. And um, a, a, a young man that young, he doesn't go to the gun range. He's not well trained in in weapons and stuff like that. So he's not able to help, be able to control a, a weapon in that way. Um, Thank God that this man was so ignorant that he wasn't a carrier of a weapon because anybody with some skill, anybody with some type of gun skills, when he pulled that gun, he would have been dead before he shot me. Mm. I mean, but that's that's people like Mr. Boss and myself and other people out in the world who take uh, who take their weapon serious and who train and learn how to shoot and things of that nature. He wouldn't have got the gun out if it were me. He'd be dead today. Uh, but I wouldn't be hitting his mama. Uh, so um, I, I just, I hate it for the young man because the two things could have happened in this situation. It could have emboldened him to say he a killer and people are going to be shaking his hand and high-fiving him and he's going to live the life of a killer. Um, or it's going to mess with him psychologically. And, you know, there's two things that can happen. But I know his homeboys, I know his street cred about to go through the roof. Um, he's going to get real popular for killing this guy. Well, for one of my understanding is he is not that type of kid. He's an honor roll student, and he just graduated at what, from the eighth grade or something of that nature? Yeah. And he wasn't he wasn't that type of kid, but he, he knew how to, he wasn't afraid of that weapon. Even right. though he fumbled with it, what have you, he wasn't afraid of. And that could have been simply because of where he lives. He's in Chicago, uh, you know, shooting weapons and young people right. have it's not a new thing. And I can very well think that mom probably had it for that reason. She probably had her concealed carry for that reason um, that she knew that she may one day have to protect herself. There's so many different scenarios right. because I've even like um, been in the car with Mr. Boss and he would say something like, OK, you stay right here. The, the weapon is in the glove box. Lock the doors. I'm going inside for a minute. If we're in certain places, it could have been just that simple. We don't really know, um, but they definitely were, you know, all the charges was dismissed. But my, mm -hmm. my point I'm trying to make with you is what influence, if any, do you think his mom had on him to get uh, that weapon? Oh, very music? much. Very much so. I know in this situation, don't nobody want to hear it. But nine times out of ten, with him getting that emotional that quick, I'm guaranteeing you that's a son husband. I, I'm, I, I'm, but I, I'm not gonna put that out there because I don't know the situation. I'm just saying. Um, I saw a picture of the young man. I was like, nah, that, that boy don't look like he gonna shoot nobody. No, he don't look like he gonna harm nobody. But he did. But black man, I, I just don't. What I know of young men is they always have protected their mothers. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what people, what, what security boss, the thing is, men think differently now. When I was growing up and a dude would have hit my mama like that in the store, mm -hmm. I would have took pleasure in slowly beating the hell out of him. Right. I would have took pleasure in busting him up so bad that every time he see a piece of meat, he would think of me. And right. I will beat him some more and beat him again. You know, I like, it, it would just, I'll take pleasure in that. He can't learn nothing dead. I need him alive. I need him to understand that you mess with my mama. I beat you to within an inch of your life. So I think that, you know, I think that it's gotten to a point that these young boys, there's no such thing as fighting no more. Just kill everybody, stab everybody, shoot everybody. Um, it is what it is. Because at 14 years old, that man would hit my mama. I would have walked. I would have ran in there and fought him. Straight hands up. We would have tore that pole place up. But you know what? That that little boy wouldn't have been no competition for that. The way he was hitting that boy's mama, I mean, he didn't spare. I, it just didn't look right at all. It doesn't look right to me. Y'all, I've already said this a couple of weeks ago. We talked about men hitting women. We're well, not really hitting women, but you know, 
in defense of themselves or protecting themselves. Like I said, mm -hmm. grab the woman, do something because men don't win. This man right here, um, she didn't she didn't hit him and he didn't have to defend himself, but he still died. He still was deleted before because of a very bad decision. Now, what we don't see, um, I was on a panel. I was on chaotic panel. And a young lady came up. I think she called herself Lady Chicago. Mm -hmm. Lady Chicago says that it was his the young man that was deleted. His girlfriend was the one that was egging him on. See, we don't see that. But it was another woman involved. It was another woman involved. And she was the one egging him on, telling him, telling the older woman, he done already told you to get your food. You know, you need to shut up. You know, just egging him, just egging him along. And that young man, 32 no, years old, mm -hmm. was deleted right there today, that day. You know? That is true. Uh, he did say three times, ma'am, please get your food and leave me alone. He did. No, he didn't say leave me alone. He said, get your food. How did, what did he say, Black man? Did he say, I heard him say, get your food, get your food. And then he said, get in the car. And so she, the, the young lady also said that, um, that he thought that she was talking to him, you know, with the that. get in the car part. But, but still, how do we get from zero to 100, Black man? How do we do that? How do we um, do that? It's just it's just terrible for me because anyway, I, I want to talk about the young boy because he is 14. And if he is a son husband and he is the protector, the covering or what have you of that home, we know he can't do that because he is a young man. And I don't know about a father. I can't say the woman's a single mother. We don't really know. Somebody's told me that she's a businesswoman. She handles her business. She's not a rowdy woman. I don't know. Do you think she was rowdy, black man? Oh, absolutely. That? Absolutely. Really? She's right. Absolutely. And I think, oh, absolutely. Because let me tell you something. Mm -hmm, tell me. My wife would never go in back and forth with a man like that. Would never happen. Mm. No matter what he said. She would never go back and forth with that man like that. It wouldn't even got to the point where he wanted to hit her. It, my wife wouldn't have done that. She just, he, he, my wife would have had that self-control where she wouldn't have done that. Period. Uh, Security boss, I don't think you would have done that. I don't think you would have been going back and forth with that man like that. No, I wouldn't have been there, but I, I didn't hear so much of a back and forth. But because, you know, I, I you know, y'all hear differently for me. I don't know what was said exactly, but I didn't hear so much of a back and forth. I heard her say, uh, go to the car. And it, it sounded like to me, though, you know, however loud she was, that she was trying to explain something to this man. And I do realize that some people you can't explain stuff to. But I think he had all intentions on hitting her because it's like he said, you say something again, I'm going to hit you. You know, that was his demeanor. You say something again, I'm going to hit you. And at just, that point, and she should at that point right there. Now, let's, let's stop right there. At mm -hmm. that point, she should have said. Nothing. Respect, respect the fact that he is a man. You don't know what kind of day this man had pressure bus pipes. You don't know how what his mental health looks you, like. You don't, you don't know. know. Crazy, sane or what. When that man said I, when he threatened to put his hands on you. You should have shut your mouth. And you and know, you that's not going to that is not going to happen in 2023. That is not. So that's what we're talking about. This is where the revenge thing comes in. That is not going to happen. It's not. It's not. Especially if she felt like we could talk to sin seven, sin seven, sin about that. If that woman felt like I am not doing anything to this man, I haven't touched him. I don't even know what he's talking about. And he just hollering and screaming. She's going to try her hardest to make her point. Right. And that's the thing in the times we live in, because now, um, you know, if a woman in, in these days and times, women don't have class. And that's why a lot of them um, is is just. I mean, a, a lot of them are, are just. They'll go up to a man and say, I'll hit you in the mouth. I'll punch you in the face. I'll, oh, I'll gosh. Just, just, you know, they're just aggressive. Women are just some these women today are just so aggressive. And I pray for them. Because you're going to run. I told my niece, you're going to run into the wrong. I tell anybody. I tell a man, a young man. I said, okay, baby, you're going to run into a man one day. He's going to decapitate you uh, because you don't know how to stay out of men's faces. You got you to gotta stop being so aggressive. Women need to be women. If that, when that man said that, any woman I know in my circle, any woman I know would have said, when he said, you say something else, I'm going to hit you, she wouldn't have said nothing else. Because she don't know what this man got on him. Get ready to do, yeah. If he but instead, stuff, he crazy. You don't know. Instead, though, her son must have heard that and went and got that gun and ended up killing him. 
are deleting them. I'm so sorry. Let me read this super chat. I agree with you, black man. I don't think women should be aggressive. I don't think men should hit women. I don't think there should right. be any of that going on. Um, right. But we also need to have um, we have we need to have a conversation about this because, like I said, uh, hold on for a minute. Let's read these super chats. And we'll oh, right Anissa, Anissa said that wasn't the case. It was the case. He said, "Don't say nothing else, or I'm gonna knock you out." And she said something else. Yeah, he did. That's Anissa. Anissa, that was exactly the case. Now, maybe she's not. A, maybe she's talking about something else, black man. Okay. Maybe she's talking about something else. But um, we're gonna drop the link. And I'm going to have y'all ask y'all to come up and just give y'all a quick part of it because we got to get to the we got to get to it. But this all goes back to the revenge, though. All this is the part of the mindset that women are carrying, though. So don't 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 even get it mixed up, y'all. It all goes together. <laughs> Mr. Scotland, thank you so much for your five dollar super chat. Hello. I see you had a picture of Priscilla in your thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Surprised she's still around. OK, you know, Miss Priscilla, Black Man of Spirit kicked her behind years ago. OK. I don't know nothing about Priscilla, but I did see her on TikTok and she was saying some real crazy things, Mr. Scotland. So that's why she's on the thumbnail and you can help us out as much as you can with the history of Priscilla. We would appreciate it. Black men, wouldn't you appreciate that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Scotland. Uh, Big Ant, Big Ant, you always coming through. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, SB, I disagree. Okay. I'm training now my niece and nephew, 12 and 14 years old. What to do? With a gun. Hmm. If something happens and an adult can't get there on how to defend yourself and not to be a bully. Um, well, did we say that they oh 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 black man? I think maybe you said yeah, that he's yeah, 14, my son, he's not. Right, yeah, right. My son just turned 16, but my son knows if I'm not here and he's here with his brothers and sisters, he's the oldest because my 19 year old's off in school. He knows center mass. He knows I have to go center mass. He knows I take him. I take him and I have the guy that trained me to train him. And then I work with him on weekends. If somebody come in here, they're gone. My, my son going to take him. It's going to be real bad. And my son will be another one in the news. Uh, it's because he understands how, what it is to protect his family if I'm not around. So, yeah. So Anissa says, black man, keep your hands to yourself. Anissa, we, we're totally, I think me and black men are in agreement. That man should have never touched that woman. Well, see, the thing never, is, never uh, should have touched her. Anissa, I know you may not be that woman. I know security boss is not that woman, but I've been around women. I'm telling you, I grew up in the hoods. I've been around women who talk to me. Women can cut a man down with their tongues. And this is what the, and this is biblical. I'm telling you, like there's a whole section of the Bible that talks about women who push me into this type of behavior. And, and I'm telling you, like, I, I remember my son when he was little and his sister would hit him. Pop! And he knows, I told him, you ever put your hand on your sister, we'll have a problem. And so is now that she knew she had that protection, she felt like she should do a sneaking without me knowing about it. And my son used to get so angry, he used to put his head in the pillow and just... <gasps> Right, because he wanted to defend himself, and I caught her one day, and we, we ain't had that problem no more. Uh, but but she felt the you know the need to just be all up in my son's face and and you know hitting him, and they were young; they was probably six, seven years old. But it, it, it but you train them young, so um, men will get upset. A woman can make a man. Ooh, Delilah made Samson cut his hair. I mean, you know. Uh, but she would got butt naked in front of Davis wonder. I mean, let's talk, but go ahead. Security I mean, do you think that was this the case in this particular incident? Or do you think that fellow just had some emotional issues? I think he has some emotional issues. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we don't know. Like on the way uh, uh, when I'm driving home in this six lanes of traffic here in Dallas, I hear F you middle finger letting down the window. I've had a man roll down the window and say, you monkey nigga threw a banana peel at my truck. Now I followed him home. We'll talk with that. That's a whole nother show. But it, it but but you hear that every day. And those men are on that highway headed home to their wives. That that angry, that angry. The women and the men, that angry in their cars, blowing and punching their steering wheels and hitting the horn and screaming out their window. They're going home. And when they get home, their wife could say something about, oh, you, you, uh, you he could say, baby, I'm tired. I mean, where you ain't tired. You're a piece of shit. You this, you're not this, you're not that. And that man just, that's all it takes is a moment. We we, we gonna have to definitely work on things because I hope a woman ain't just coming off on her husband like that. You a piece Shh. of <laughs> black man. That is so okay. Listen, maybe 
And that's, that that wouldn't be a wife because that is harsh. That was right. That was all in your face and wrong. So I, I agree with you on that one. But listen, I'm going back to the young man. He is 14 years old. He's just taken someone's life. He deleted, deleted the young man. I don't know about all those extra stories about um, her telling her, him to delete the young lady that was egging the thing on and none of that. But like you said, either he's going to be seen as a um, heroic or he's going to be having to deal with the fact that he deleted a young man because they said he continued to shoot at the young man, continued yeah. to shoot. Um, I don't know if that was out of fear or anger, but I really hope that he doesn't take the wrong path and end up being someone that is now someone that thinks it's okay to delete somebody. Let me show you how desensitized men are to the new women, to the new modern woman. If you play that video back, not a man in that video intervened. No, they ran out. But no, see, but black man, that's, that, that bothers me. That bothers me because I hate the fact that um, today's woman is changing the mindset of a man. I hate that. I, I really wish that that would never happen because like I said, I still want help. I still want somebody to help me with my case of water. I still want somebody to, if somebody's picking on me and I'm just sitting there and some crazy person come in there and, and they start picking at me, I want a man to recognize that this woman needs help and not just sit there and videotape it and then run out if he decides to hit me. I, I may not have to say anything because this has happened so much. Yeah, hey, Go back up to AMF. AMF. AMF says, black man, stop blaming the women. When men are men, the community will be in order. Blaming women did not help Adam and it will not help us. Hey, not one time did I blame the woman. But but I will say this, AMF, everybody has a place. If if, if uh, everybody has their place, right? Everybody has place. Everybody have instructions. A woman knows to be in her femininity. She knows to be a female, right? She knows to be a nurturer, right? And, and, and if you go in the Bible right now, we're talking about Bible and Adam. Name one woman that went to war with David. Name one woman that fought on a war. They were at home nurturing their children raising their children and their daughters and their daughters to be servant women and their and their sons were out in the fields with the doing the crops with their fathers so everybody had their place today the dice has been shaken and no man wants to take accountability for no woman that don't belong to him men are saying you know what i'm gonna protect my wife i'm gonna protect my i'm gonna protect my and i hope you men come up so i can check both of you i'm gonna check I, he, but my wife i'm gonna protect my daughter but anything outside of that, I'm not. I'm not going to protect it. If okay, I so let's head, stop right there. Not say nothing. Let's stop right there, black man. Okay, now because we kingdom men and kingdom women, if that's a thing. <laughs> right, right. You know, <laughs> I'm saying like if you go somewhere right now and you like right now, it's all. If you go on Facebook, Instagram, all the social media, TikTok, when you see a man abusing a woman, nobody helps her no more. Okay, but is that right? Is that a correct I, thing I to do? I don't, I don't think it's right. But just like we talked about a few months ago, security boss about it at the gym, the, when the weights fell on the woman's neck and the men passed by her like she didn't exist. The reason that one one of the men in your chat said it, the reason for that is because so many women say, oh, it, when he was helping me, he touched my breast, sexual harassment, he touched my butt. He was looking at me. I feel uncomfortable. And the men are like, hell no. It's too many charges going on in here. It's too many women saying we took, uh-uh. If, her, if the weight fall on her neck, I don't give a damn about that. It is what see, it is. See, that's, that's a problem because it's like the, what women are doing are keeping you all from being the man that you all are supposed to be, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I think right. that that comes because you've been given authority and dominion and, and you're a leader. But if if you can identify that I'm a woman that needs help because the one before me didn't need help and was aggressive and and did this and said this and said that, then I'm a suffer. Is that is that is that what we're doing? That, well, not me. I mean, not you. I, I'm I, just I, saying. I, I'm saying as, as as the world right there, majority of men right now, they don't care. You on side of the road with a flat tire, so what? Right? Uh, you you in danger, so what? If a man punch you over the counter, so what? Right? This That's is a, this is a big deal because what we're saying is, and you help me out. I may have it in wrong order. Women, excuse me, men just don't trust women anymore. They don't. They don't. Nope. And and guess what though? And women never trusted men. Yep. There you go. And that is a problem. Did I say that in the right order? Or should it be the other way around? No, no, no. You're right. Because, That's the right order. Yeah, because what's happened, like I said again, what, what happened is men used to be that way. Men, Absolutely. Men, you, you could grab a woman by the wrist and a man say, whoa, brother, you, you, whoa, take your hands off that woman right now. Now you grab her by the wrist, man, I don't care what you do to her. Hell, they ain't going to do nothing but lie on us and treat us like shit anyway. 
not all of them black men there's still a lot of men out there that will come to a woman's defense i've there's seen few, it um but there is a lot of them that speak exactly like you're speaking also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean not like you speaking but the things you just said yeah but that is this is that's scary to me because there are so many women i've seen videos and i've heard stories of course of women one woman going into her dry cleaner her own dry cleaner the big black guy following followed her in there got her in there and beat her down he did not grape her he beat her just continuously beat her and she couldn't have been no more than five feet tall 120 pounds he continuously beat her mm -hmm. for no reason then jumped up and walked on outside yeah he, yeah it's mentally mentally disturbed I, I, hell crazy and then and there were people walking by you know it's on camera <laughs> then you got you got the lady on the subway all these men there none of them they ain't gonna get up out their seat they're not gonna assist with anything they're just sitting i mean this we gotta stop in my opinion but i do understand a man's point of view i do understand a woman being aggressive i told you this there was a woman coming at my husband and i said to him hit her in the chest i i did say that because she was being way too aggressive all in his face it was he was very defenseless and i knew and i had to get him out of there because it, it was like what what he had he was backed up in a corner so i do understand what you're saying so right. don't don't get me wrong man i do understand that women can be very very aggressive and what have you now and i also say this if a woman hits or attacks a man i don't want him to hit her back i want him to restrain her in some way put her down in some way because men do not win when they're going to defend themselves y'all do not win right now i will say two things um, restraining a woman can also get you put in jail. Let me tell you mm. why. Because if you grab a woman, especially as light as my wife is, my wife is a really light skinned woman. If yeah. if I if I grab my if my if we were in a situation which that would never happen, but if she was in a situation and my wife and I had to grab her and restrain her mm. and and hold her down like this here, and I let her go, that's bruises on both arms. When the right. police come, I'm going to jail. Trey will tell you that. So restraining can get you locked up too. So, you know, it's either damn if you do, damn if you don't. And back in the day, a man could walk away from a woman and she would sit down on the couch and cry. No, 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 no. That was in 87 through 93. Now, <laughs> listen to me. When you piss a woman off now, she's going to say, oh, I, oh, you're going to turn around and walk out on me? She's going to tell a lie and then come for you. She's gonna hit yeah. you right in the back of the damn head with something. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it, you know, now men just need don't need to know, they don't know what to do. And I'm I, don't. Don't I agree. Need, these men could express what what's the solution to walking away from something that could kill you. You you definitely have to read the situation. I agree. I'm agreeing with you. I just the fact that men are getting so caught up and like you said, restraining, you did getting deleted from a, a, a verbal argument, getting jumped on. Uh, getting lied up on all these things because these women are looking for some of them are really looking for re revenge this actually started way back when we was doing conflict resolution mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um sherelle sherelle came on the show and she was like um sb women they 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 want revenge against men so in other words they they felt like that they've been hurt sometime before or what have you i don't really know but she said and used the word revenge. And I was like, are you kidding? Revenge. She was like, yes, SB, revenge. And, so and, <laughs> that's, it's, that's it, it, it's also like, and I got to use this as a reference. It's also like that poor man in Mississippi. His wife said, you ain't nothing this, you ain't nothing that. And, and her mama sitting right there egging it on. And you ain't, you don't do nothing. All you do is work. You don't cook. All you do is work, 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 get up, work. And you don't do nothing. You don't do nothing. He said, baby, I'm, I'm finna leave. I'm just going to leave. That man turned around to walk out the door away from that woman and she shot she him. She shot him. Yeah. Yeah. And and guess what? They wouldn't even mad. I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. She said he got four kids. You're talking about the one that mama was in there. What y'all called me over here for? I know, black man. And, and then not only shot him in the head, but shot him in the head in front of his kids. She shot it was in the head. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't she know shot him while he was walking out the door. She shot him in the back of the head twice. And then she said, Oh my God. Then she said something that was really weird. She was like, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't do this. What she said? She said something really weird yeah, to make I, it. I, I didn't try to do. Well, uh, it was a mistake. No, you no, shot she said something. Yeah, yeah, she did. Yeah, she said something. Yeah. Go wow, ahead. wow, wow. So let me read these super chats really quick, and we're gonna bring, um, we're gonna drop the link because I really want to hear some other opinions because, mm -hmm. yeah, we need some answers because we don't want our men being deleted, going to jail, prison, or whatever behind a lie or behind a woman that could not, that was overly aggressive. Just last week, though. Rudolph, Rudolph and Dominique, he was on his way to prison. 
If they would have found him guilty of deleting that boy, then he was going to be on his way to prison behind that girl who had already attacked him, beat him in the head and mistreated him, mistreated him. And she still had a husband. Yep. So listen, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding what y'all, y'all I'm understanding what, how you have feel. You heard, have you heard the court update on Jonathan Majors? No. Same thing with Jonathan. Jonathan had called that woman that day, that woman he was dating that day and told her he no longer wanted to be with her. He was interested in someone else and come to find out is Megan good. Lord have mercy. Anyway, he doing, he going from worse to worse. Uh, but you know, um, he told her, I didn't want to be with you anymore. We're not going to be together. The result of that is that the evidence is showing now security boss. He's going to get off. They're showing okay. now that when the police officers came, they looked at the police footage on the police uh, cameras. She had no bruises and no scratches. There are witnesses, several, who have come forward and said he never put his hands on her. All of that happened after the fact. On wow. the so now she, this woman, basically lied to destroy this man because he didn't want to be with her no more. Wow. So let me read this. Thanks, Dre, for your hello, Dre, and thank you for your five dollars super chat. Women shouldn't be aggressive, and men shouldn't be overly emotional. Mm -hmm. Men need to be men. I agree. How have the standards fallen shaking my head the standards have really fallen they definitely have um but we got to fix it we just because the world is doing something don't mean that we have to partake in it and that's the that's the message you want to put out there because um it is it is very i don't know what needs to happen first but something needs to happen because yeah. like i said men i have never known men not to trust women but men do not trust women right now in 2023, a man does not trust a woman at and all. That's, and that's why we should have that clip of Whoopi Goldberg. You remember what she said? Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> said, I'm five foot. She said, I'm five foot three, five foot three and a half or whatever. She said, I'm telling women out there in this month of domestic violence, uh, we, you know, we're against women against domestic violence. She said domestic violence goes both ways. She said, I'm five foot three, five foot four. She said, I've been with men who have been six foot four, 280 pounds. She said, I'm not going to ever put my hands on him because I don't know what kind of day he just had. I she mean, said, but that, that's simply said, though. Why, why, why would you put your hand on a man anyway, though? Why would you do that? Exactly. And so she was like, women keep, and all the women on all the women on that panel, they was pissed that she said that. But she was like, keep your she, a woman should not ever hit a man. A man should not ever hit a woman. And I she agree. said, if, if a woman hits that man and he defends himself, I have no problem with it. And all the women just, they looked at her like she was stupid. But, excuse me, but do you think her speaking foul to that man is justification for hitting her? I think if a woman is, oof, okay, I'm, 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 I'm not going to talk from flesh. I'm going to talk from Bible. The Bible says it is better to sleep on the roof of your house than in the house with a quarrelsome woman. That means a woman who wants to fight, argue be dismissive talk down crazy to you so just go outside brothers and i'm not saying literally go sleep on your roof but find you somewhere else to sleep for a while you know uh until she can calm down and you may want to reevaluate what you have uh because if a woman talks to you like that yeah does she really like beloved. Beloved. you have to you have to revalue you you do but let's, um, Marcus Evans, thank you so much, Marcus, for your five dollars super chat. Hey, everyone, I'm kind of late, but revenge are women coming for what revenge are women coming for? Marcus, we're gonna get there in a minute, but you know what? This message that Miss Priscilla is pushing, I can imagine that women are thinking that you know it's the natural progression for them to be in charge. So if they are in charge, then they may want to beat a man down occasionally to get them in line, right? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so maybe we'll understand in just a minute why women are thinking and moving to the way that they are. Thank you again, Marcus, for your five dollars super chat. Some women support the behavior from men to be this way. Marcus, I don't think ever a person should be hitting on each other. I don't think that at all. I also don't think that a man nor woman should be. Um, now, this is in marriage, y'all. Now, on the street, I, I, it's hard for me to understand why I, I would engage so, you know, so much with a stranger. But in marriage, I don't even think that a husband and wife should be aggressively speaking to each other. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't believe in that either. I don't think anybody should be bullying anybody. I don't think anybody should be threatening anybody. Not in marriage. I think it needs to be we're married. We're grown. Um, your feelings might be heard, whatever the situation is, but you got to take your time and put it together. You don't, yeah. we don't, you don't need to bring that into your marriage relationship because, you know, if people are 
you know, feeling vulnerable, anything can happen. You know that like, you know, anything can happen. And, and then it may not be something that you can turn around or, you know, get to do over. You get what I'm saying? So when things are most emotionally charged, somebody got to be the grown up and be like, hey, look, we shouldn't be acting like this. I'll talk to you later or something like you just said, dismiss yourself. Right. And and, and like uh, AMF said that it has to be a standard. He said black man, it does not justify women uh, being punched repeatedly. You're absolutely correct. I just didn't, hey, you know, watch it on your own time. Not right now uh, because we're live. But I just did a show about about men, um, uh, about men not standing up in their square. I did an entire hour and a half uh, talking about men. It's a shame how men won't stand up for anything uh, and, and, and they're conforming to the world. So, um, yeah. And, and you know, and I'm going to follow up with that tomorrow night. With sit your ass down if 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 you can't if if you're not helping this situation. So we'll talk about that tomorrow too. So I mean, we're talking about it. I'm just saying that in certain situations, you have to talk through these things, like Security Boss is doing so eloquently right now. We're talking about it because it happened. We saw it on camera. We saw men not defend a woman. We saw all the areas. Men not defend a woman. A woman trying to step up into a masculine role. Per some in, in one little case in one little moment where the man said be quiet don't say nothing else and she said she had to she had like security boss said right, we got to prove ourselves yep listen because um the one thing that is not taken account is women and men think differently because i'm gonna give you an example and y'all i'm being transparent which and y'all can go back and look at this yourself okay so me being on chaotic channel the other day um even me being there i ain't had no problem with anybody I said what I said. You know, I advocate for men. I'm always looking for a way for y'all to get out, right? I still had men coming at me as though I'm one of them. Said, you, you don't care. I had one one day tell me, um, I'm not going to accept your your happy Father's Day. Right. I, don't, I don't need you giving me. I'm like, what? Now, see, me in my mind, I'm thinking, um, brother, you must have heard me wrong. I was just saying happy. So, so now this is me explaining myself to somebody that mm -hmm. is obviously not stable right i'm saying to him hey i just said happy father's day did i did i say something to you I'm, I'm talking to this person right next moment he may be in total rage because i'm here now trying to explain myself to him or disagreeing with the fact that i'm saying happy father's day to him and he not understanding what's going on you kind of get what i'm saying yep now, if we would have been in front of each other, it may have gone totally different, right? Right. But you see how I walked into that, had no idea? Yep. You see, I just said happy Father's Day. Then the other day, I was there and I said, um, I was th the man said, All you women, y'all give it, y'all making that little boy a hero. You know, you just wanted to take that brother out. Y'all don't care nothing about black men. And I'm like, what? So I'm saying, brother, what's going on? No, that's yeah, a lot of bottle up. Um, yes, re resentment from pain or hurt from that. But you know, men, we can't talk about that pain stuff. So no, but listen, the problem I'm having though is towards all black women. Yeah, it's all black women. Y'all all the problem. So so seeing that we all the problem, black man. How do we get our women? I'm saying this from I'm, I'm talking for women now. How do we get our women prepared for this? Because should I sell, tell them don't even make no eye contact, keep walking, don't say nothing because you don't they don't know where it's coming from. Now, I just happened to be in a YouTube square and I was able to say, hey, look, I was just saying happy Father's Day or whatever, you know, or sir, not we not all alike. Some of us really advocate for you. And then all of the women there was like, hey, look, we're not feminist women. We we want our men. We all had to say that. But it was after mm -hmm. the abuse. <laughs> right, it was. Right. So I'm just saying all of us are not going to be that way. There's going to be some woman that be like, you need to shut the H up. I said happy Father's Day. What is right. wrong with you? I'm giving you a compliment. You coming back at me like that? What right. is wrong? You know, you get what I'm saying? Right. So we got to We got to I hate to say it because I never wanted to uh, have women behave different. And I don't believe in that. I actually, I want women to always be ladies and to be wives or preparing themselves to be that. But it's getting dangerous. Black man, I thought I, I don't think I would ever say that it's getting actually dangerous for a woman to. Be that carefree. We got to pay attention. You, you know why, though? You, let me say this. Um, play devil's advocate for a second here. <sighs> Men are not being appreciated and celebrated. And, and this starts very young. Imagine being eight years old, no birthday party, but your sister got one. Imagine being 16 years old, and, and that's a milestone in your life, and they just say, oh, happy birthday. 
right? Imagine being a husband coming home and bringing him the money and the cheddar and your wife does not reciprocate anything that you do. She doesn't show any appreciation. Father's Day come, kids don't even acknowledge you. Uh, or they'll say happy Father's Day, maybe, right? Or, or you treat it like a machine. Every day you get up, you're just a machine. No, you, you don't get any nurturing. You don't get anything. There's a lot of men like that. I won't say, I'm, I'm going to hit, sit here and say clearly it's the majority. And men just stop being vulnerable because they understand, some men understand that vulnerability is a shotgun shell that they're giving their wives to use later to blow their brains out with. Black man, we got to do something. That's I mean, I, I, that's listen, truth. that is that's that's a bunch of unhappy people. That's exactly yes, what that is because exactly. Um, I'm smiling at you, people. her people definitely. Hey. I'm smiling at you. I'm saying, hey, how are you doing? And the next thing I know, you might be hitting me in my mouth because I'm a black woman, and I just represent a black woman, even though I haven't said two, three words. That's my fear. Yep. It's also my fear that I'm driving down the street, and because of you having that fear that. You just push, take my car. See, that was one of the reasons why um, Chaotic asked me the other day, would I have um, used my weapon to delete this young man? And I don't know, Black Man, I think I've mentioned this to you before. Um, Mr. Boss always telling me, take your gun, take your weapon, take your weapon, take your weapon. And the only, only place I take it is when I'm exercising. When I go for my walks, I will take it. But just me going to the mall or me you know, driving around the city or whatever, I don't. And um, yeah, that's my wife. I, I stay on her butt though. Get put that thing, keep it with you at all times. He, he stays care. on me, he stays oh on me about it. My wife do the same but, thing. Listen, um, I probably feel more comfortable with having it now, but when I had that Hellcat, I did not because I said, Y'all, y'all gotta pray for me. Because I said to myself, the first time some young boy come up to me and tell me to get out my car <laughs> and give it to him, I am going to shoot him. I already know it. And I said, I'm not going to take this gun because I don't want to do it. I want to do the right thing. I want to be in my right mind and just give him the car because I can get another one. So but, I refuse to take my weapon with me because I'm saying to you, black men, if they run up on me with a weapon or run, if I can't, if the car can't run them over, if the car can't do it, I am going to defend myself. And I just knew driving that car made me more of a target. I knew even though I love my car. I love mm -hmm. it, but I was like, I don't, I don't want to be this way. I don't want to be this way. So I would always leave it at home. So then he would say, okay, don't drive this car down this street, down that street. Just stay away from over. You know, I said, okay, I'll do that. And of course it worked out. I sold a car. And now I feel more comfortable because don't nobody want the, the, the Maserati hatchback, the crossover. Yeah. Right. That's a grown folks car. But anyway, right. <laughs> uh, I just didn't, I just didn't want to be, I just want to have to make that decision. Black man. I did not. Because I just, I just, it was such a fear. I was like, they gonna want my wide body, and I ain't get ready to give it up. <laughs> I right. not get ready to give it up. So I just, you know, and it worked out. Everything was good. I sold a car. I'm, I'm in one piece. I didn't have to use my weapon or anything. Mister Boss never had to use his, and it worked out. But that used to be a huge fear, especially with that car for me. Yeah, so. I, the world has just uh, changed so much. Security boss, it, it's really, it's really bad. Um, like chivalry is buried under George Washington. I mean, that's how deep it is. Uh, you know, men don't believe in showing women any type of love or affection anymore. They don't. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about like women they don't know. You know, like it, it's gotten so bad that older elderly women are not even getting it. You know. Let me, um, let me ask you a question about that though. You know how I'm a I'm a believer. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a believer. I happen to believe, and you tell me, because maybe I'm just crazy. I will jump into something in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I am that yeah. one. Yeah. I will. Mr. Boss will be like, you have lost your mind. I actually think that if it's time for me to go, I'm one of those ones that believe that. If it's time for me to go, I am going to go. So right. I will jump into something just like that. If I see, and I have seen so many things. If I see, I told Mr. Boss, I say, look, sometimes it's just you yelling or screaming just to let them know that somebody's watching that will be just that second to get them apart. You know, mm -hmm. um, I said, but we can't just keep walking. Right. And, and by the time you call the police and, and the police get here, he's done drug her all the way down that darn railroad track. So we got to do something. I understand you don't want to go over there and get in. I do it. But you got to yell. Hey, look, we're watching you. And, and it has broke up a, a several altercations because. 
you know, I told you it was one in the mall where the man just came in and just knocked the man completely out right here in front of me. And I was like, <laughs> Mr. Boss, like, hey, you ain't working. You ain't working. I'm like, OK, let me calm down. Cause it's just so much stuff that goes on around me. I just think that I'm one of those people. I can't. I can't keep going. I can't break out. Break out my camera and be like, "Oh, when he hit a real hard." Oh, I can't do that. Right. I gotta intervene. I gotta right. do something. So I'm not. I'm not worried about my life. Like I hear some men say, "I'm not gonna put my life on the line," and and that's the way they think. I totally understand. But I guess I just don't. I just don't but, give but, thought like that. But then you know, security boss. <sighs> I'm the same way, but you have to pray for me <laughs> because, I, and this is me being transparent. You have to pray for me. Everybody in the chat, just put a one in the, in the chat. Let me know you're praying for me because I, with my own children and my own wife and family, my temper is very, very bad. Like you can say what you want to say to me, but when it comes to my kids and my wife, I, my temper is just 1000. Uh, I'll go from zero to a hundred in, in less than a second. And it, I mean, it's real bad. And when it comes to other people, like elderly people, or if I went outside and seen a young boy push an old woman down or do something, it's, it's secure, it's, I know me. And I, that's why I said you sometimes you have to know yourself, not to put yourself in that position. Because like the other night, if that was me in that place and he punched that woman in the face, I'm thinking about my daughters. Like, what if this was my child? You know, what if it was my daughter? And I, and I would have intervened before he punched her. Because if I was sitting there and he said, you say one more word, I'm going to knock you out. And I would have probably said to him, no, you're not going to knock her out. I think just, I would have just, just to de-escalate the situation. That's now, what I'm talking about. Why couldn't somebody just say, come on, come on, baby girl, don't, let's men, go. Men don't, men do not do, do it anymore. anymore i know and we we're, we're that's a that's a huge issue i get it men i understand um the modern woman is just don't need a man or all these things that we say but yeah i don't know i don't know but anyway do you have anything else you want to add to that did you want trey to come up and add his absolutely uh, where's, where's my brother at? bring him on up here all hey. right we're gonna we, trey i want you to come up and let us know because the all the charges was dismissed do you agree with that or do you think that there should have been some charges um, put against the mother and the son based on what you've seen? We will play the video again. And um, Trey, we're going to drop the link for you if if you don't mind coming up, if you're still in the comment section. But then if you don't want to do that, we're going to go on to Miss Priscilla. Am I understanding that's her name? And then we're going to get to what she has to say about the situation. Priscilla. Oh, okay. Priscilla. 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 Priscilla the, say I heard some uh, Priscilla say she somebody said she the next KS. Shit. <laughs> Black Bear, Black listen, we had some super chats we need to oh, read out the My bad, I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were not muted. Oh, oh god. Okay, listen. We, I don't know where Trey is. Trey probably somewhere. Oh. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> let me read these super chats. Mr. Bones, have okay. Uh, Big Ed, thank you so much for your $10 super chat. He said, SB, I saw you, I saw, if I saw you about to get into it with a man, I would step in. But if I see Kayla about to fight, I'm grabbing some Kool-Aid and <laughs> watch. It depends on the person. I, I, can, uh, I, can, I can see that too. And I, I agree with that. You have to uh, analyze the situation. Like you definitely do. You do. You can't just jump in because guess what? She'll be trying to move you to the side. Didn't I say such and such, such? So you're right. You're right, Big Ed. Thank you so much, Big Ed. Uh, Marcus says this is this is uh, this, this is the way is women, women to today need to learn the hard way. Now we're seeing the results of this, um, Marcus. To me, this is um, a terrible situation. A young man had to be deleted. Now something that he was probably a person that abused women and other people, and what he got, he got. And that may have some validity to it also, but yeah, yeah it was over hot dogs. Yeah, and that's what Anton, you know, one of the things Anton said too, you know, he said, I can't, I can't cover anyone who doesn't respect me, right? I, or I, I can't, I can't be there for somebody that doesn't respect me and in, in any form or the matter. Um, I think that men are to the point, if I'm going to risk my life for you, I have to know that you know, you're the type of woman who reciprocates or you're the type of woman that just won't talk bad to me. Just, you know, because most women, you'd be like, I saved you from getting shot. What, what shit, that what you're supposed to do? You want a cookie? 
So let me ask you a question. Okay, so we got Sin 7 Sin here. And she's, she has her own opinion about things. Is this not someone, and I don't mean to make it so personal, just based on what she's saying, do you not saying that she wouldn't be somebody or could be somebody that you protect? Hmm. I mean, based on her opinion, I would. Um, That's my point I'm trying to make. Just because I, I, she has I, I, a difference in opinion, we got to dislike like that. But it was somebody like Cynthia G. Oh, that's different. You know, it's, it's Cynthia <laughs> I might G. push Cynthia out there myself. Go on, give me her. You know, the rock can hit her in the face. I'd be like, damn, get up. No, look, how, what was that show? You know, look, go stand over. You You need some help? <laughs> no, I'm, just I'm just kidding i don't wish anything bad on people like that but i understand her viewpoint is very hasty towards men and she says some very off the wall things and i don't believe in that but hey we gotta get better so mr gilbert thank you so much for your two dollar super chat and he says women hit men because no one teaches them not to uh-uh, Mr. Gilbert, ain't nobody teaching no woman to hit a man. I don't know what this is going on. I have no idea. Women know that they are weaker than a man. They know that. I think they're basing all their um, knowledge off of the fact that you guys as younger and back in the day, more traditional, you just didn't hit women. You know, men didn't hit women. And I think they think that they have the right, just like black man said, he used to tell his son, do not hit your sister. Right. And then she thought that she could get away with it. And now it's just not like that anymore. Yeah, right. they're hitting back. But if you hit somebody, you darn near might get hit back. So uh, you got to keep your hands you, up. You, you know, when I saw this chivalry security boss that amazes me, that takes me back to my grandfather, is a TV show with Forrest Whitaker plays the lead role of the Godfather of, of Harlem. He plays, yeah. Bumpy, he plays Bumpy, Bumpy Johnson. Johnson. Mm -hmm. One day, a man picked his wife up off the street, right? She was walking with the groceries. And he told her, get in the car. I want to talk to you about your husband. She's like, no. And the guy said, he insists that you get in the car. She got in the car with him, came back home and told Bumpy, I got in the car. Bumpy went to the mob and said, I'm going to kill him. Ain't nothing you can do about it. He did before the sun goes down. Wow. Those, those type of men right there, back those, right? Even with his daughter, somebody even just touched his daughter the wrong way. That he would cut their throat. Like he does, it, it's just, it, it's a man protecting his family at all costs. And, and I think that's, I know I'm like that. I know that some of the men who are married and have children are like that with their children as well. I think that we're like that with our families. I think it's just not extending out anymore. Like back in the day, everybody would go to a man in the community. A man in the community would come over and say, hey, why is this man trying to break in your house? Why is he putting his hands on you? Like, we really don't have that part anymore. But I right. think men are protecting their families. I, 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 I'm i the same. I just secured the balls. My wife, will, my wife can come in that door now and say, the man at that place up there just slapped me. Secure the balls. I will never be able to do a show with you again. <laughs> Keep going. So listen, <laughs> Mr. Scotland says, I would like to, oh, hold on. I would like to see, I would like to see more black women um, who say they care for productive black men show support for them to go passport bro or save yourself black men like Chantel Simone. Mm. Gregor, Gregor, Mr. Scotland, I don't, I don't support you enough. Cause I've actually seen Chantel give a man a hell, holy hell, black man and all. Haven't you black man? Absolutely. <laughs> Chico, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He gonna come over here. You know what, Mr. Scotland? I love you. Um, black built like a conquering king. Thank you so much for your five dollar super chat. It's funny how men must know that he should not put his hand on a woman, but women don't believe that is in reverse. It's true. You're exactly right. We talked about that. They don't, they think they've been from childhood. You do not hit your little sister, you do not hit the woman. Yep. But if the woman hits you, you bet not hit the woman. So they, you know what? Your mama and your daddy has groomed you to be that way. That's a part of, quote, being a man. And that's just how it is. So, you know, that's how it is. I'm sorry. But I don't agree with women hitting men at all by any means. Look, so, at, this, um, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Read, read that one. Read D, this one. D-Mac. Some happen to your family. Hold on for a minute. What am I listening to? Is that you, Black Man? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Um, D Mac, thank you so much for your ten dollars super chat. I have traveled extensively around the world, yet I have never witnessed women behaving as disorderly towards men 
as these sisters in America. I can agree with that. Hey, I can definitely agree with that. Security boss, I'm finna say something that ain't sexy. And I know they finna come for me and I'm ready because, you know, I love smoke. It helps me breathe. Listen, I was at church yesterday and my, my wife and I and all of our children were sitting on the same row together. And because we always get there early enough to sit on the, you know, a couple of rows back on, the, you know, up toward the front so we can enjoy the service. Security boss, it's it's a multifaceted church. So you'll see a, you'll see black, white, Hispanic, it's just all different lights, uh, you know, colors. Yesterday, while that sermon was going on, I happened to look over my shoulder. Security boss, I look across the church and I told my wife, I bumped my wife because she needed to be my witness. I said, look at these women. Security boss, them white women and the Mexican women all had their journals out, their notebooks out. Every time the pastor says something about what they can do better, they just writing it down. I mean, journals just, just writing, just writing. And I'm looking over at the sisters. I say, okay, one of my sisters finna show up for me today. One of y'all finna show up. None of them. And, and I, I'm looking like, where y'all journal at? Y'all ain't gonna journal? Y'all ain't gonna... I didn't know. Y'all ain't gonna write? Because he was talking about learning how to shut up, how women should learn how to be quiet. Their, their peace is in being quiet. They have more power and strength in their quietness. And these women were just, I mean, I'm telling you, white girls back there just writing. Just it's writing true. it back. Just... It's very true. <laughs> My hey, brother, what's up? Hey, hey Trey, but uh, let me get through these uh, super chats. Hey, um, AMF, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for your $2 super chat. He says, paying the subscription fee. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, Marcus Evans, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. This is um, this may sound harsh, but some of the these women don't deserve uh, protection. Sorry. Oh, wow. I agree with you. I see exactly what you guys are saying. But I just don't know, you know, what comes first. And I'm, I'm not asking y'all to do anything, analyze the situation, try to find you a good woman that you feel as though can be protected and do so. Because this 14 year old boy now was in a man's position. Of course, there was some grown man in there and y'all saw them run out because I understand y'all saying y'all not putting yourself on the line for anybody you don't know. Uh, aggressive woman. I agree with you and someone that can get you hurt. I understand all of yeah. that. I do. I understand that. But how do we actually know when all this is going on? Hey, Trey, what you got? Hey, SB, how you doing? What's up, Black Man? My brother, what's going on, Trey? Not much. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been talking about this all day. Obviously, a lot of you know, people on panels want a law enforcement sort of perspective on this. Um, first of all, let me just say that there are no winners in this in this situation. No. We have a, we have a you know a black man who lost his life. We have a mom who showed her irresponsibility, and we have a 14-year-old that's going to be tra traumatized for quite a while. And I'm telling you that as somebody who's had to use lethal force on more than one occasion, mm. it does bother you. And you do think about it, and, you know, certain days that it happened, I can remember the day, the time, I can remember what it smelled like, I remember what the weather's like. I remember vivid memories of those days. It sticks wow. with you. December 24, 2014 will always be a day that sticks in my head. Always. That's one of the days that I had to use lethal force. It doesn't it doesn't just go away. So I feel bad for this 14 year old because it's something that's going to bother him. He was put in a position that as far as I'm concerned, he should have never been in. And I think that his mom was irresponsible about that. However, I want to be very clear about something. <laughs> the actions of the decedent are irrepre irreprehensible. They're, they're disgusting. Um, the posture that he took. The bladed right. side stance, the bald fist, the closed fist, yep. saying that if you don't do this, I'm going to, I'm going to hit you. It's it's disgusting, because at this point, both partners could have walked away. He could have walked away, she could have walked away, and we would have we would not had this. I do want to put a little bit of of, I don't want to say blame, but I want to put a little bit of the onus on 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 the woman who has the the carry license. For those of you who get a carry license, it's usually a typically a class you have to take. And in that class, they mm -hmm. talk about de-escalation. There's exactly. an expectation of de-escalation for the those different levels. who carry weapons. Mm -hmm. They teach you yep. that your first job is to try to get out of that situation and that you're to use your weapon as a last resort. Yep. I did not see that from her. As a matter of fact, to me, it almost seems as though she was, she was arrogant about it and, and telling the son to go get the weapon. And if people don't think that she didn't tell him to get the weapon, I would question how did he get the weapon? How did he know where it was at? Because for those of you who have permits, you know 
that you are responsible for the storage and the possession of that weapon. So how did he know where to get it from? So there's a lot of things, a lot of question marks here as opposed to how this thing escalated. But ultimately, does this happen if that gentleman doesn't strike the mother? And the answer is probably not. not. Right. Probably not. More than likely, he doesn't get shot. More than likely, he doesn't lose his life. So then I look at it at the, from this point, and I, and I say to the women, you have to understand something. Black man can attest to this. Mr. Boss can attest to this. Right. Men are violent. <laughs> we're stronger mm -hmm. and we're destructive. Yep. And in most cases, men have 10 to 20 times the testosterone of a woman. We can tear a place up. Yep. You ever wonder why when you drive past, you see one man and you see six police officers? There's a reason for that. There's a reason for because that. Because that one man hyped up on adrenaline and drugs can tear six officers apart. Because I know, because I've been a part of it. I've seen one guy throw three or four officers around like it was nothing. And he was a little guy, too. Men are strong, especially when, when, when adrenaline's running. So for women, I would say you have to protect yourself and learn how to disengage from guys who are not controlling their emotions properly. It's obvious he wasn't. It's very obvious he was not going to control his emotions. You got to disengage because nine times out of 10, you lose that fight. Damn and it's not, and, and, and it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. And now we put a 14 year old in a position where he's got to make an adult decision about whether or not to save his mother or to get beat up. Cause more than likely he would probably have got beat up too. He said, he didn't look like he's that big of a guy. So he probably would have gotten beat up too. So there's a lot of things going on here. Um, but ultimately, if I, I don't, I, I won't put the, the, I won't point the finger at one particular person. I will say that nobody wins in this situation. And I think that a lot of things could have been done to avoid this even going down that path. To me, prevention is the best cure. We got to stop it before it starts. And that gentleman that lost his life, I think that had he taken a different route, we wouldn't even, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. I think you're right. And I agree with what everything you're saying. We we have to, as women, just know that we got to shut up. We can't we can't be aggressive towards men. Actually, don't even make any contact. I don't know if she knew the man or not, but her even trying to have a conversation with him was not something that she should have done. Her escalating and getting loud. No. But I did hear her say go to the car. And Trey, you think that at that point is when she told her son to go to the car. She was telling him to go to the car to get the weapon. I, you know, I think he already had the weapon. He was oh, already okay. he was already in the restaurant, so he had already had the weapon. Mm -hmm. it's okay, so, she, what, so when she what, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Ashley. I was just saying. So when you say when she said go to the car, you saying you thinking that she was just sending them out of the environment. Period. With the weapon, I do. I, I think okay. she was telling. I think she was telling him to leave. And I think this is you know in the heat of battle. And black man can tell you this from playing sports. Things get confused. You you not that's I may be looking at black man, but I'm not talking to black man. You right. know what I mean? Right. I think she was telling her son go to the car, but she's looking at him. So he's thinking, are you telling me to go to my car? Because mm. his reaction is go to the car. Yeah. But she's actually did. talking to her son who's behind him. Right. He can't see that because he's so focused on her. He doesn't realize that the son is actually behind him. And she's talking to him, go to the car. I think maybe at first she wanted him to, to come in and bring the bring the you know the blicky. And I think maybe she had a change of heart. Mm -hmm. Cause it can happen that fast, right? I think she had a change of heart and it was okay, get get out. You don't need to be in here, get out of here. This is gonna, you know, I, we're just gonna leave, or you know, maybe whatever the case. But by that time, I think the gentleman had kind of made his mind up. If she say one more word, I'm knocking her out. And so you me, think there was a lot of conversation. I, I do. I think. I think. I think there's a lot more to this than what we see. Before the cameras came on. Before the cameras came mm -hmm. in, I think they. I think they had a lot of dialogue. Their cameras on when it escalates. So right. were there cameras in the environment? Were there cameras in the environment? As far as we know, there are cameras in a restaurant. Here's the thing, though: a lot of these restaurants, they have cameras, but they don't have audio. Uh, I used to. Come, I used to come into that problem all the time. No they got, audio. They got visual, but they don't have any audio, so we can't be. We can't be told. Right. What's, what's said? And I want to bring up one last point before I jump off because I can't stay on late tonight. But I want to bring up jump. when you guys watch the video of the 14 year old, I want you to watch his demeanor. I want you to watch his body language. This is not a scared kid. And that may have something to do with his environment because he's in Chicago. So maybe, he, you know, he doesn't exude fear, but he wasn't scared. Now, he fumbled with the weapon, but that may have to do with lack of training. Right. But That's what I said. He didn't, he didn't yeah. miss his shots. 
I know Wait, people. Let, I know people that that can be for three feet away from you and they can't hit you. Because I said the same thing when that sh when he when that shot rang out. I'm like, dad, that could have been his mama. But listen. But that's like we, that's like the training SB. We know that we need to know what's behind mm -hmm. our target. We, we know we know that they were engaged. That's what I'm like. What do you do? Yeah, but so listen, I got a question. Um, is it a fact that the weapon that he actually had was his mother's concealed weapon? As far as we know, I haven't heard anything different other than that is his mom's weapon. I haven't heard that that was his weapon or a ghost gun or anything like. Yeah, I haven't heard anything along that. Yeah, right. And the police took it. Right. Right. I and was just. I was just thinking this because it was very small. So I was just thinking at that, you know, that maybe what this young man. Three eighty. You, you know, I got like a little forty caliber that looked like that. Though. Yeah, that's okay, what I'm okay, thinking. Okay. The same thing as me. Okay. That I take walking with me, but I'm just thinking, was this the actual weapon that mom concealed, or did this young man have one on him himself? Because like mm -hmm. y'all are saying, he does live in Chicago, and for a fourteen year old, fifteen. I mean, wasn't that? It's what not abnormal down for a 14 it, No, it's not to carry <laughs> right. his own weapon. Right. So I'm, also, I'm also watch his body language after the shooting, after the first shooting, and then it trickles outside, and he shoots him two more times. Watch his body language. This is not a child that's unaware of what he's doing. Right. He, he's very clear because it's, it's like he's been in, there she's instructing him to shoot the girl, and she almost she tries to take the weapon away from him. He doesn't let her. He keeps it. So he's very listen. Familiar. I don't know if you guys have ever been in these high pressure situations. A lot of people cannot keep their cool the way that this 14 year old did. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. This 14 year old was able to, I mean, he is really moving like this is not my first time going through this. Now, I exactly. don't know whether or not it is. I'm not going to put that on him. I'm just going based on the video. I watched the video about 20 times. I'm going based on what I saw. He doesn't look, he doesn't look as comfortable as I've seen grown adults look when they get into. Uh, you know, we call them firefights, but get into shooting situations. So, you know, I, I also think there's a part of her that knows what her 14 year old is capable of. Yep. Which is why she, at some point in time, she told him where the weapon was, or he had to have already known yeah. where, the wep where the weapon was. There's a part of her that knows that he'll do what's necessary. It's, it's, there's a, to me, there's a lot, and I think this is where. Um, Kimberly Fox, I think this is where the, the state's attorney for Cook County, I think this is where she struggled in trying to meet the burden of proof, and which is why she ultimately dropped the charges. I don't think she would have ever met the burden of proof. Right. So do you think that this can come back again? Not that those same charges, but something different, like child endangerment and something else? I, no. I do. I think she eventually will have to answer for the enticing a minor to commit a, a murder. There you I, go. Think that char I think that charge will come back to get her. And I also think that his un unlawful use of a firearm at some point in time will come and get him. Okay, so wait a minute. The, I think they will go with some minor charges, but as far as the murder is concerned, well, you can't get him again. You are in charge once yeah. you Okay, so enticing a minor. How would she have been, how is she ever responsible for that if all those those theories about the text messaging and all that stuff is not, not the well, case? Well, there is, there, is, there is audio of her telling her telling him to shoot the girl. The girl, I okay. Heard it. So but he didn't do it though. Correct, but but that you don't you don't actually need the action. I got you. Okay. If I if I incite violence, like yeah, f them up, f them up, I'm, I'm, and and they never do it, I'm still inciting violence. Right. Right. You know, I yeah, like I old heard. girl did with old boy Rudolph. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. then there was a there was another one you mentioned. What was the other uh, charge you said they could actually bring up against Unlaw unlawful use of a firearm? Okay, so tell me about this because I here in North Carolina, and you can help me out, Trey. You probably can. Um, it's okay for a third party to defend another individual that's not involved. Right. In other so, words, okay. I would, have to actually, I would actually have to go look at it, look at the the, the, the code book on how they write their unlawful use of a, of a firearm. Mm -hmm. Here, where I'm at in D.C., unlawful use of a firearm is practically using it at all because there's no really no, most people here in D.C., we have some of the strictest uh, anti-Second Amendment rights here in DC and also if you use your weapon, more than likely we know if it's you didn't have a permit. He doesn't have a permit to have the weapon. Right. So technically he can't use it. Right. She, on the other hand, could have, which is also interesting because she's the one that has right. the, the license. So if she would have actually shot him, it probably just this would have been one of one of these type situations. Because she has a license to actually use the weapon. He does not have a license. He's 14. He can't have a license to use the I'm, weapon. 
I'm wondering, I, you know, because I don't, I just know here if, if let's say, SA, if we if we walked upon someone that was being, you know, SA, mm -hmm. sexual assault, then we knew it, even if we didn't see it, but there was evidence of it, we can actually um, protect that person, that individual with a weapon and not even be involved, not even have to see it. In yeah, all, all jurisdictions allow for, for citizens to intervene. Mm -hmm. All jurisdictions do. It's a, it's a part of a some people refer to it as community policing, neighborhood policing, citizens arrest. I know you guys have heard that term before, right? right? They do allow for citizens to intervene. I heard you guys talking about this earlier. And I, like I said, I'm torn. I have a daughter. I would want somebody to, to step mm -hmm. in and help her. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I will never shame a man who's decided that he's not going to step in because intervention could cost you your life. And I would never want somebody to lose their life um, by, by doing the right thing. I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a judgment call. Mm -hmm. You go with what you feel. And, and if you feel like that's something that you don't want to do, I would never shame you for not doing it. And I would praise you for doing it. It does take a special person to step in and intervene, but we have heard stories. We've heard uh, recently a story of a man who lost his life intervening in a domestic violence situation. And he had a kid and a wife and the whole nine. So it, it really, to me, it is a judgment call, but I don't think anybody should be shamed for not stepping in, especially in 2023 when anything can happen to you. It was, it was an incident in Walmart. It was a Walmart store where the uh, young man was was um, deleted for stepping in. Yeah, it happened. Um, so you're right. You have to analyze the situation and you know make the best judgment as possible. I agree with that. I All right. So I, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta get up early in the morning. So thanks, gotta, Trey. I'm Thank on you daddy. So very much. I'm on uh, daughter, daddy daughter duty tomorrow. So. All right, man. Hey. All right. Do yeah. the job. Do the job. Do the job, baby. All right, man. Appreciate All right, thank you so much for that. Um, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Boss, I didn't hear you. All right, so listen, we get ready to go to Miss Priscilla. Um, Modern women won't revenge. Y'all gotta listen to this video, black men. You gotta listen to it. No, All I right, I heard it should video. be the dominant, I'll... and the man should be the submissive. That's yeah, what because y'all y'all follow commands. You go do. You go do, and she gonna tell you what to do. Because here's the thing: if y'all don't have somebody telling y'all what to do, y'all are going to be reckless. And so women are divorcing y'all in these relationships because they are allowing you to quote unquote lead and they're being submissive. And since y'all can't lead yourself, y'all leading her into to the ground. So here's the thing. The natural order is for the feminine to be the leader. If a woman should be the dominant and a man should be the submissive. That's yeah, what you're because y'all follow commands. You go do. You go do. And she going to tell you what to do. Because here's the thing. If y'all don't have somebody telling y'all what to do, y'all are going to be reckless. And so women are divorcing y'all in these relationships because they are allowing you to quote unquote lead. And they're being submissive. And since y'all can't lead yourself, Y'all leading her into to the ground. So here's the thing. The natural order is for the feminine to be the leader. If you give to the feminine, right, the feminine is always going to regenerate life and everybody's going to be taken care of. Y'all are territorial. Y'all just want the image of leadership. You just want to be out in public. I'm the leader, but all of the responsibility is actually on the woman. The leader takes the majority of the responsibility. If women allow men, which means she submit, all right, and allow him to lead, she don't have no control over what he's going to do. She's steady submitting to him. Women have to change their minds and realize that they ain't supposed to submit to men because men just going to do what you allow them to do because they don't have no governor on their own behavior to know when to not do something to know better, they don't know. They're just gonna keep reckless, being reckless. And they're not gonna take care of your feelings because they're only concerned about theirs. So mm. Ooh, get her down, get her down. This woman is just, she damn, she don't so damn ignorant. Just, just get her down. Mm. Black man, she said a whole lot. Okay, so listen, I first wanna deal with the part where she says that women you are divorcing your men because you are allowing them to lead and you are submissive to them did i hear that right you did 
She okay, did. let me say it again. Let me let me say it again because I need you to help me with that. Women are divorcing their husbands because the woman is allowing him to lead and she is being submissive and that equals divorce. Yeah. Did she mean to say that? Yes, yeah, she did. Because she went on to say something different because she said, because we're going to see what's happening is women, y'all continue to be submissive and and y'all ain't telling these, y'all not telling these men what to do and they keep doing, doing, doing and they ain't going to change. She said it's the natural order. You see, you see. Okay, so listen, just slow down. She's... Let's, Mr. Boss, I need you to play that again, but I need you to stop it at about, I'll tell you when to stop. Keep it. Dr. Steele, how are you? But we're going to make sure we understand this exactly the way this lady said it. Because should maybe, be the dominant and the man should be the submissive. That's yes, what you're because talking Y'all your, follow commands. You go do. You go do. And she going to tell you what to do. Because here's the thing. Right if y'all don't have somebody. T- okay. So Lord she said men follow commands y'all go do what she say do because that's what y'all do right but then in the next breath she's gonna say that women are divorcing the men because the women are allowing the men to be leaders and Mm -hmm. the women are submissive now does that does that make sense not at all Mm -mm. that is what she said dr steel i know you an active listener am i getting her right am i just putting words in her mouth no no you're getting her right (laughs) believe me you are she did say that, right? She did say, she yeah. okay, okay. So maybe she's talking about two different women thus far. Did y'all hear that? Okay, keep going. Let me make sure I'm hearing her correctly. They telling y'all what to do. Y'all are going to be reckless. And so women are divorcing y'all in these relationships because they are allowing you to quote unquote lead and they're being submissive. And since y'all can't lead yourself, y'all leading her into to the ground. So here's the thing. The natural order is for the feminine to be the leader. If you give to the feminine, right? The feminine is always going to regenerate life and everybody's going to be taken care of. Y'all are territorial. Y'all just want the image of leadership. You just want to be out in public. I'm the leader. But all of the responsibility is actually on the woman. The leader takes the majority of the responsibility. If women allow men, which means she submit, all right, and allow him to lead, she don't have no control over what he's going to do. She's steady submitting to him. Women have to change their minds and realize that they ain't supposed to submit to men because men just going to do what you allow them to do because they don't have no governor on their own behavior to know when to not do something, to know better. They don't know. They're just going to keep being reckless. And they're not going to take care of your feelings because they're only concerned about theirs. Okay. It sounds like she's talking to children. No, but she keeps changing it. One one minute, the women are are leading. We are the receivers. What you give us, we just keep rejuvenating over and over again. But we need to, but men need to understand that we're the leaders, but then the next moment she says, we, men are the leaders and we need to submit. And then she says uh, that men, <laughs> she, she kept going back and forth. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I just, I would, I just want to see her in a hostile situation. Well, I, you can't say that no more back then. No, I'm just saying like if a big ass dude came up on her and me and her walking together on the sidewalk and the dude said, what y'all looking at? I'm gonna look at her and be like, "Go on, man, you <laughs> Stop. Uh, so we gotta talk about this. It's one more part I want to hear, though. I want to hear this one more time. And Mr. Boss, I'm gonna need for you to stop because the woman is talking in circles, and I need to get that last circle. I know Doctor Steele probably got it, but I need to hear that last circle. My lord, should be the dominant, and the man should be the submissive. That's yeah, what because y'all y'all follow commands. You go do. You go do. And she going to tell you what to do, because here's the thing. If y'all don't have somebody telling y'all what to do, y'all are going to be reckless. And so women are divorcing y'all in these relationships because they are allowing you 
to quote unquote lead and they're being submissive. And since y'all can't lead yourself, y'all leading her into to the ground. So here's the thing. The natural order is for the feminine to be the leader. If you give to the feminine, right? The feminine is always going to regenerate life and everybody's going to be taken care of. Y'all are territorial. Y'all just want the image of leadership. You just want to be out in public. I'm the leader, but all of the responsibility is actually on the woman. The leader takes the majority of the responsibility. If women allow men, which means she submit, all right, and allow him to lead, she don't have no control over what he's going to do. She's steady submitting to him. Women have to change their minds and realize that they ain't supposed to submit to men because men just going to do what you allow them to do because they don't have no governor on their own behavior to know when to not do something, to know better. They don't know. They're just going to keep reckless, being reckless. And they're not going to take care of your feelings because they're only concerned about theirs. So All right. I, I just need her to go find somebody to take that hat because she wearing that hat to hold that wig down. Listen, <laughs> I, 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 I'm I, sorry. You can't be up there talking like that. You, and you're not being a leader yourself. And the top of your hat says queen maker. Yeah, a lonely queen maker. You forgot a word. All right. So listen, we gonna, I want to get Dr. Steele's point of view on this. And we're going to talk about the natural order. And then we'll get back into it. Go ahead. Uh, ooh, easy money. Wait a minute. Easy, easy money, Jones. How you doing, easy? He says exactly. Men care more about looking like they're in charge than actually being in charge. Now, okay. easy, now easy money. You, I, you know, I, 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 you my boy, and I love you to death. <laughs> but, 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 but don't make me have to. Don't, don't make me come for you. Don't make me virtually throw you out the window. I, I don't want to have to virtually throw you out the window. <laughs> Adisa says she confused. There you reckless, go, Adisa. There you go. Say, reckless say he lost some brain cells behind this. <laughs> there you go, Adisa. That's what I'm like. That's what I'm talking about. Vaughn Bryant, how you doing, sir? <laughs> Mr. Mom, Mr. Milner says she's been watching too much black what? Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. A beautiful animator says, nah, black man unfiltered. <laughs> she basically inverted the male female. Yes, she did, but then she turned around and, and went back to it also because she said men are divorcing, or women are divorcing men because they, they're being submissive to them and they're being letting men be in the leadership position. You know, hear that. Now, we have been taught, wait a minute, before, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to let Dr. Steele talk about it first because he's an active listener. He probably got all this in one breath, and I know I couldn't because she kept me on a swivel. So go ahead, Dr. Steele. Okay. God uh -oh. Uh -oh. gave man his attributes for a purpose. It is our purpose on this earth to lead. And a lot of us are doing it. We're not just saying it. We are doing it. Now, there are some of us who are afraid to lead and do not. But most of us do. Let me tell you about Priscilla. Uh-oh. Come on. Okay. She thinks she understands male nature. Huh. She wants to use... Um, Psycholo famous psychologists from the past, their quotes to explain it. But I don't think she ex she looked at all of their explanations about us men. She only going to look at only some of the things they talk about. Now, I'm going to admit something to you. Uh oh. She has a book called The Five Components of Love. It's actually a good book, believe it or not. But the thing is, she, did, she doesn't seem to practice all, all of those five components. Hello? I hear you. She doesn't seem to practice those five components. Hello? I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Right. At least much. Yeah, or, or at least... Yeah, or at least when it comes to men. I remember the first time I saw Priscilla. She was on um, the breakdowns of women's perspective. She left a very bad impression on me. You know, she talking about 
you know, negative things about men. And one time she said, I don't want to hear anything men have to say or anything like that. That was very terrible. Okay. Very up, very the very opposite of what she said in her book. Now, she did give a preface, preface about mm -hmm. her grandmother and her mother. The anger that she has right now was actually passed down uh, two generations, you know, three dead generations. Okay, that's where she's getting this anger from. Now, so, I mean, that's the thing about, you know, Princella. The central thing is she thinks she understands male nature, but she really doesn't. Yeah. Mm. So, on so her channel, I asked her. Go ahead. No, do you, you said she has a channel? I can well, hardly hear you. Well, I mean, Princella has a channel. Okay. But but she was on somebody else's channel the first time I saw her. It was okay. the breakdown of women's perspective. She and says that, that she um she says she just did fresh and fit also. So I guess what I want to ask you though, does she have a very large following? I think she have have a yeah, she has a very large following. Okay, so this that would make sense. Yeah. That would make sense because mm -hmm. um, I think women, the influence that this this message could have on women, could be one of the reasons why our women do not want to be submissive. Because if if they look at her and they feel as though she's winning, and 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 if she's giving them this bit of logic or her logic on how men actually think or the way it actually plays itself out, then they would want to be in this role versus being submissive um, and allowing the men to be leaders. Because she said here that women who are submissive are now being, are getting divorced from their husbands. Now that doesn't make sense to me at all. Because I'm thinking if yeah. you're in your role and your husband is leading, what would be the need or what could be the cause for the divorce? Exactly. She, she just got it backwards. She really got it backwards. I can remember when she was on the breakdown, right? I asked her in a super chat that does, does she read the Bible? And she said up to a point she did. And she did quote some of the scriptures in her book, but for what I heard, she doesn't read it anymore. And she doesn't have to tell me why, because I know why. Because the Bible talks about the role of man being the providers, being the protectors of this earth. Again, that's why he gave us this attribute. And again, that doesn't tickle her fancy because she wants to think that women are the natural leaders. This is what this is against what God set, set up. Totally well, against it. Let me tell you this. A lot of times when women take this premise, they're they're basing their foundation on the scriptures where it talks about the curse that the, the curse upon a woman or the curse upon Eve, where it talks about um a when it's a curse for a man to be over a woman. So they kind of pull from that and twist the scripture and try to make it fit what they're doing. You understand what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? I yeah. Know. So they try they 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 twist that to justify the be a woman being submissive to a man as the curse, you know, because it says, you know, the curse in childbearing and the curse in marriage. They want they want to take that and make it fit what they're doing right here and say that you shouldn't let a man, a woman should not allow a man to be over her. It's a curse. <laughs> you know, even though you got, you know, you got your Ephesians over here that gives you the blueprint for marriage and God has spoken to you and us about being married and give married and giving you a blueprint for that. But they some way manipulate the scripture by not reading it all and not, not speaking to or going through who he's actually speaking to for this actual word. You know, to kind of get what I'm saying. And they twist it around mm -hmm. and then you can manipulate the scriptures to say, yep. you know, make somebody think that, OK, listen, it's a curse for you to be under a man. I mean, it's just like you said, the way a man's body is formed, the, the actual role of a man, the actual what God has told men to do from the beginning, the minion, 
um, help me all of that. Okay, there was sin in the garden. We absolutely know. We already know what the sin, what what happened, the knowledge, the tree right. of it. We know this, but they still take the scripture and they twist it around. Now, if you're saying she's not using that anymore, so maybe she has turned o- over a new leaf, but by saying these things right here, I can almost imagine that she hasn't. That yeah. She hasn't. Yeah. Now, now, granted, again, there are some men who were, you know, abused the attributes that uh, God gave, gave you. Just like that man you saw in the video, striking that woman. Okay. He has strength, but he, he just steadily abused it. Mm. Okay. But that is not every man. Because, because there's a lot of men, a lot of men who were actually be leaders not just talk it, okay? Speaking of that man that you showed, everybody in that you saw in that video was in the wrong. Everybody, everybody. I can see that. Because let me tell you something. First, let's start with the woman. Now the man just want her to get her food. Just plain and simple, right? right. But she wants to argue back with him and anger that man. See, that's the part I don't understand. If her food is there and it's ready for her to pick up, what's the issue? I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. So, so, so for her, for him to say, just get your food, I'm like, kind of like, okay, that's probably all she came for. If it was just that simple, then this would probably be over. So exactly. I feel as though we're exactly. missing yeah. something, though. Don't y'all think we're missing a little bit of something? Yeah, I'm telling you. So I'm, I'm guaranteeing you, people, I told Trey a few minutes ago, people don't turn their cameras on until voices are raised and chaos is ensued. Exactly. So before that happened, it could have been, some back and forth as well. Uh, we, we don't know that. Uh, but uh, at the same time, when that man says, don't say nothing else to me, if you say something else to me, I'm going to knock you out. She should have respected the man, period. Because like uh, Dr. Steele just said, you know, men are st- stronger. They're more powerful. They're more, um, you know, you don't want to get into a fist match with a man. You, you absolutely don't, but I can already tell you she's not going to respect that. She's not a child. She's not right. a child. They probably didn't have no relation. She's, now, if he might have said it like maybe in a calm, cool way, like, you, ma'am, go ahead and get your food. She may right. have would have respected that, but if not, if you don't get that food, and I say one more thing to you, I'm going to hit you in your GD mouth or whatever. I'm going to knock you out. She's not going to respect that. And then, too, she was an older woman. She right. felt as though she deserved more respect from him than that. Um, and she just wasn't going. I don't know the situation, but to me, if he would him saying, get your food, if it was just that simple, I didn't see any food in the window. I did not. But if it was just that simple, then she should have got the food and walked out. But guess what? Now that I'm saying that to you all, he could have been actually saying, order your food, go ahead and get your food. She may have just walked in. He might've been like, go ahead, order your, get your food because maybe she got in front of him and he was there first. And she just thought maybe since he wasn't ordering that she could go in front of him. And then that's what kind of kicked it off. We really don't know, but that kind of makes a little bit of sense to me because going to get your food, going to get your food. I didn't see any food there for her getting. But if you go back and look at one of the videos, when she she walks directly up to the window, I didn't see that young man anywhere around at that time. At that particular moment, she's at the window and he was nowhere. So. I, I just don't know. I would love to find out. Maybe we can get her to come on the show and talk to us and just tell us exactly Ooh. what happened. <laughs> and then we can ask her, how was you actually yeah. feeling? You know, is there something that you would do different? Because guess what? As women, Anissa, um, Sin7, all of us ladies, we can't talk to people. T. Shaw, we can't say anything. We need to be quiet. We need to do what we got to do. And we need to get out there. First of all, you need a man to go with you. Um, me and Mr. Boss go most places together, if not all. So I'm pretty covered in that that area, and I'm not going to no hot dog joint anyway. But who knows? I think this could happen almost anywhere. Right, so, right. ladies, y'all gotta be quiet, keep your head focused on what you gotta do, get in and get out. Actually, I would say don't go inside nothing, go through the drive-through and do not interact with people when right. you're by yourself. That's the best thing. But 
I happen to think that maybe Chicago don't have that many drive throughs that you can do this. Most a lot of them maybe jump out and go inside or whatever. But right. y'all got to figure out another way. Y'all got to pay attention because um, there are a lot of people, young men and women that are mentally ill. Y'all just last week, it was a young lady that come outside with a bra on and shorts with a weapon. And you saw what she did. And that oh, was yeah, a young lady. That. just like that. And there was no questions asked. Right. That could be anybody. I saw a young lady the other day um, at the car wash, y'all, and listen, everything in me wanted to go talk to this young girl because this young girl was so wrong, so wrong, so, 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 so very wrong. Wow. But everything in me wanted to talk to her. But then there was that other part of me that says, no, don't even bother. Right. Don't even bother. And the don't even bother one. But I really, y'all, she was literally hiding behind a tree. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you, and, you know, Crips and Care sort of talked a little bit around, along that lines earlier today about, you know, being covered by a man. You oh, know, yeah. yeah. If I a see. man, if a, if a man sees, you know, his woman in trouble, you know, he'll he take some Superman. action. But. Wait a minute, since sin seven, and you she know, may not be talking. I'm know, not sure who she's talking man, to. Which... Hidden, hidden. Hold on for Please. a minute, Dr. Steele. Um, it's something wrong with your audio, but he's um sin seven says there is these is going, okay. these is these is going over your heads. I'm not sure what these is, but yeah, I'm she sure meant, she's yeah, she meant this is going over your head. So I guess we I don't know. Put it in the chat what you talk about. Yeah, tell us what's going over our heads, dear. Let us know. Oh, she might be talking to somebody else but anyway um it's going back to what i said ladies y'all have to understand and be conscious about what you're doing and what you're saying because you could be simply not intending on having a back and forth and find yourself in one and you never know how the situation may escalate i say you all get married have a husband stay and <laughs> stay covered and love on him and allow him to love on you that's that's my solution to it all but black man right. Uh, what I want to hear from you, though, what is the natural order? Because this young lady has said the natural order is for women to lead. Now, can you imagine women leading? W what if we had a woman president right now? I know we have oh, a woman vice president, man. but think about the woman what? president. I just want, okay, this, this is what I want you to do. Everybody in the chat, get a piece of paper and a pen. I want you to write down these letters. S-T-U-P-I. Stop it, Black man. She's stupid. OK, this is a stupid woman. And I and I, I, I'm not saying that lightly. She is that this woman is delusional and she ain't got no man. Right. She ain't got a man. Right. Oh, she do. I don't know. I don't, uh, Priscilla, does she have a man, Dr. Steele? Do you know anything about her personally? He frozen. Oh, he can't hear me. You know, uh, for, for what I heard, Priscilla, I think so. I think Priscilla is a lesbian. I think. What the hell? She got a girlfriend, I think. So she want to be us. What? God damn it. You're confusing me. So you want to be us and then tell us about us and then make what you used to be the leader of us. I'm, I'm hey, Listen, I know that was confusing. I'll slow that down and play that three times over. This is crazy. So she a stud muffin. Oh, my God. Get out of here. I, I don't even want. So, mm -hmm. so oh. with her being a stud. Muffin. And that would mean that she's the more masculine of the relationship. Yes. Would that make her the head of the relationship or would that make her the submissive one in the relationship? It's all about who wears the deal. I mean, I'm sorry, who all who wears the scrap on. I don't know. Uh, because if you just heard her talk right now, she's deepening her voice now. You huh? Can't. You said that, Mr. Boss, play it. Play it, Mr. Boss. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, let me find the divine. Let me... Let, let me find a natural Have somebody order telling y'all what to do. Y'all are going to be reckless. 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 Y'all tell mm -hmm. me what to do, and you're going to be reckless. See, she's already trying to take on our voice already. Just get her out of here. She's okay, but wait a minute, Black Man. I'm really confused now because I'm trying to figure out the natural order. So if, if the natural order is for the woman, the feminine, the feminine is what she says, to be in the leadership position, then that means that she would be the male in the less feminine position, even though she is a woman. Am I right about that? Is that what she said? Uh, for what it appears, for mm -hmm. at least for what it appears, yeah. 
Wow. Okay. She don't even like the D, but want to talk about just get out. Just what? Like my thing is that's why she's sitting on the, that's why she's sitting on that couch looking like a dude named Earl that would fix your transmission because she don't even want to be a woman herself. Oh my God, Black Red, wait a minute, Doctor Steele. Do you have anything else you want to add? Because we're going to bring somebody up. We're doing one at a time, I think, tonight until a little later on in the day. But tell me, do you have anything else you want to add? Well, you go? Yeah, right quickly. Sure. Yeah, I told you that everybody was in the wrong. You know, you know, we told you why uh, she was in the wrong. Uh, you, I think you see why the man was in the wrong for striking her. The the 14-year-old boy was in the wrong for, for deleting the guy. But everybody else was in the wrong. Let me tell you why right quick. Okay. All they had to do was restrain the guy. They didn't even have to beat him up right. at all. Just restrain him and stop him from doing that. Nobody did that. That's what I said to Dr. Steele. I, I wish somebody could have just de-escalated the situation. But again, it goes back to what black man has said. Men are not willing now to put their... Um, their lives on the line for that type of hostile situation. They don't know what's going on. They see this woman becoming a little aggressive, agitated. They see this man being very aggressive and agitated. They don't really know what started. What all they know is it may just jump off and be bad and they could be hurt and they don't, they're not willing to do that. They're not related to these people. So they are just going to leave the, leave the facility. You know, can we really blame them though? Um, they don't know what's going on. Nobody really knows what's going on because everybody's sitting there like, what? Ooh. And then when the gunshot ran out, of course, you know what happened. They all ran off. But up until that point, they were acting like nothing was going on. Now, I just thought about another caveat to that security boss. What happens if just think about this? What happens if there's another man in there who is a good who is a great shooter? And he and that little boy came in there and started shooting. And that man's family was actually sitting down having dinner. And what happens if that man goes into protective mode and while that 14 year old is shooting that man that hit his mama, the shooter hits him and shoots him. That could have um, really went bad because really? think if, I'm, if I'm sitting in a restaurant and I'm in the middle of a restaurant and a man come in, he's arguing, he hit a woman. And then I was not hear gunshots. I'm going to shoot the shooter. Because my family's there. He's what? I don't I don't know the situation. I don't no, know what's going black on. Man, you're gonna you're gonna be able to identify what the threat is. You're gonna identify the threat. And that, uh, that young boy wouldn't have looked like the threat. But if he got the gun, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know him. I don't know his next action. I don't know what he's going to do. And my family there. So I'm not I'm not going to take no chances and be like, oh, he's going to skip us. I, I don't know that. Um, I don't know. But I would think that in that situation right there, you would have known full well that the young man was there because the woman was talking to him. That was her son. Go to the car. He comes back in. This boy, And then the man's hitting his mom. So, yeah, he's that. we see who the threat was in this situation. But I see what you're talking about. Right. Right. That could be the case like in um, those mall shoot shootings when you don't know, you know, it's random. And then right. I see exactly what you're saying. And you're exactly right. right. So, Dr. Steele, you're right about that. Um, everybody had a role to play in it and it could have went a different way, but it's just not like that anymore. We're not we're not a big happy family anymore. <laughs> Trey crazy. We don't, we don't, you know, right. we don't care that much like that no more. <laughs> it's all we're gonna save our own lives and we're not gonna put our life on the line for someone that we don't know because it could go very bad. And I understand that for man and woman. I really do. Right. All right. So thank you so well, much, sir. Oh thank thank you. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Hey, good to see you, Mr. Steele. Good to see you, man. All right. Easy. How oh, you doing, sir? Oh, I'm mad at this guy. That's, no, that's my boy. What's going on, Easy, buddy? <laughs> muted. Oh, I've been sitting here saying hello, and I'm muted. What's, What's going, going on, on SB? Pleasure. Black man, what's going good. on? What's going on, my brother? Good to see you, man. <laughs> good to see you as well. It's all, it's all love, man. It's all, all love. love man. All love, man. Go ahead. So tell us what you got. Now you got some stuff you can talk about. You can talk about the 14 year old boy. You can talk about Miss Priscilla and her role. If because oh oh we got oh he the one who was saying exactly the men are submissive to. Yeah. Uh, oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's that's not quite. You're right. That. It's not. It's not. You're right. She said the women are submissive to the men, and those are the women that are getting divorced. But she also said the women should be in leadership position and the men, the only thing they want to do is be leaders in image, uh, the image. Right. Of it. And that's the part that you responded to. So go ahead, sir. Right. So mm -hmm. um, so I think what she's saying is two separate thoughts. 
So what she's saying is that the women currently who are being submissive and they're letting these men lead, these men are essentially leading them to ruin or leading them not in a good in a good way. And that's why they're leaving. And the divorce numbers kind of vet that out. You know, if you think about 80 percent of divorces are initiated by women. But do you think that a submissive woman would be the woman that's getting a divorce? Yes. Why? Why do you why do you put those two together? So the reason that I say that is because if, if you're being submissive and you're playing your role the way you're supposed to play mm -hmm. and you're allowing this man to lead and this man is is tricking off all the money at the at the at the dog track, at the at the shake joint. He's got women all over town and he's not leading you in a way consistent with what he said he would do up front and what he's saying that he will do. Then, yes, I would fully expect that woman to leave. OK, so we, we're making an assumption. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I made the same assumption that you did, but I did it on the other side. And the <laughs> reason why I did it is because we were using the term submission and leadership and things of that nature, which pertain to marriage, which pertains also to the marriage of God and covenant. I would think a woman that is submissive to her husband that would allow him to make the final decision would not leave the marriage because she would actually know that there may not be a perfect man that she married. Or the man she married may not be perfect. And the only reason to leave would be abuse. Now, if we're saying 80 percent of these women are being abused and I'm with you all day, every day. But if we're saying that we're just leaving because we're unhappy <laughs> with this man because he's doing certain things, then I can definitely agree with you. But when we start using these terms, submission and leadership, I can't help but go to the Bible. Right. You know, I can't because she didn't say anything about partnership. She didn't say anything about business. Right. She said everything to me that was spiritual. And that's why I questioned it. But I see what you I see where you're going with this, though. Go ahead. Yeah. So I so to your point, I so now I, I understand where you're coming from, where you're going back to the Bible and saying, hey, th it should work according to this. And I, I I've I, I, how do I say this? Get it, without, out, get it out. Get it out. I'm just going to say it like this. I I choose to focus on what I can, you know, kind of see in reality, right? And what I see in reality versus what the numbers tell me. And if we're listening to men, like we like we say we're listening to men, right? And these men are out here saying that women need to be quiet, they need to be submissive, but yet they're blaming women for all the ails in the community. They're blaming women for, for, for having kids with Pookies and Ray Rays and they're blaming women for, I mean, it, you know, there, there, are, there are people blaming this woman for this man being killed in Chicago, you know, looping it all the way back around. And it's like, at what point are men accountable for anything that is happening in our society? We, we are accountable. We are accountable. Look at the prisons. Look at the child support. Look at felonies. Men who can't get licensed. Men who have to uh, go work at McDonald's because they missed a few payments because they couldn't afford child support. Go look at go look at these men who who are in houses raising three or four children, and then they find out thirty five percent of half a million men who were tested DNA tested find out that the kids they've been raising for fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years are not theirs. Men are suffering. But well, wait a minute. But wait so, a minute. So Hold that's, for a minute, easy. Yeah. Wait a minute, black man. I got a little pushback on that because. Some of that of what you said was consequence. That I don't think consequence and accountability are the same thing. Well, I got six kids security boss. So if I test one of mine and one of mine, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. Baby, I woo, <laughs> baby. Listen, you would listen to me. I'm gonna tell you right now, baby, it's gonna be some smoke in the city. It's gonna be hell to tell the captain if I test one of mine, one one that made mine in there. You believe yeah, me? but that's but you being accountable because you're a father to your kids. That's not right. now I agree with that. But the part about having to pay for your children through child support, that's a consequence. That's not an accountability. Mm. Yep. I, I was going to say that exact thing. I, was I, don't say. Think, I don't think this is what I'm saying. Now, if you take a test and that's not your child, uh -huh. then th now I'm with you on that one. <laughs> right. But I guess it, it all depends on where we are now going to prison, going to prison after you commit the crime is not accountability. No, no, no. I was, talking, I was talking about as far as going to jail for like child support. Like, oh, okay. I thought you like, meant yeah, right. if you don't pay, you go to jail. Uh, if you don't yeah, have, you can't afford it. You know, I've been in court for a ticket and I've seen a child support case right before me. And the man said, he said, I cannot afford this no more. I used to be on the pipeline making $2,000 a week. I'm not making it no more. I got injured. I'm at home. He said, I don't care about that. Find another job. 
Now, listen, like, you know, I'm like, agreeing with you that child support is a wreck system. It's not justifiable. Lord. No, I'm, I'm there with you all the way. Absolutely. But I still think it's more of a, okay, black man, this is what, okay. If, if the child support is too much, what do you do? Do you just, you go back in and do modifications? You talk to somebody, right? You just don't allow it to, to, to drag you. Am I, is that the proper thing to do? Well, I think that the shift, I think it's the person who holds the power. So say for instance, okay. I have a, I have a, 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 a child with a woman mm -hmm. and I say, okay, we've agreed to pay this much a month. At any time she can go for an increase. She can watch my life and say, you know what? I want to increase. He's making a little bit more money. He wearing, he dressing a little too nice. Right. Okay. Or, or we can be like in Texas, which please don't have no kids in Texas. But if, if you're in Texas and say, for instance, you were together for 10 years and I say, you know what? I'll give you a thousand dollars a month. We've got to go through no system. I'm her daddy. And then I say, oh, well, I'm, and she looks online, see, I'm engaged. She's going to go put me on child support. Texas is going to retro back 10 years and put me in 10 years of debt, right? In order to, to, to take care of a child. So they retro back to the, to the first year of the child's being on earth. So now you got to pay 10 years worth of child support. That's what okay, now that's accountability. accountability. That's accountability. That's that, accountability. That part. That part is accountability. I thought you were saying um, that because you said I went to you and I said, okay, well, I'm going to pay you $1,000. That is accountability. You said I have a child to pay for. But when I say consequence, if, if you don't if you don't willingly go say I have a child and I need to pay you child support, then they catch you and they make you pay child support. That turns into a consequence. But that is uh, this reckless, um, what you call it, that's that's taking all your money. That right there is just, I don't know what we want to call that. That's bad right. doing. That's not fair. That's, that's, I don't know what that is. That's not accountability. That's just a terrible system and it just wrecks your finances. I don't believe in that. I don't right. think, I don't think a woman should be able to look at you and be like, oh, you wearing some clean clothes. I think I need to go up with my child support. I actually think at that point in time, that man who is accountable because he's paying it should mm -hmm. fight that woman for custody of that child. Yeah. That's what I think. I don't think anybody should be drugged for trying to be accountable. Mm -hmm. But again, go ahead, easy. So I, I got to push back slightly on that. In, in my mind, child support is a consequence. If you have a child and you're not married to the, to the mother of the child, you are responsible for that child. That that's that's a that's a consequence for, for that child. And anything beyond that, where the woman see you dressing nice and decide to up your child support, that's a consequence of not picking the right woman to procreate with. Mm, it's not a consequence if the man chooses to pay the child support. Like black man said, I'm gonna give right. you a thousand dollars. That's accountability. A month, and you still go put me on child support. That's spiteful. Yeah, that's that's different. not a consequence. That's you being spiteful. Right. Well, to that's, that point, why not just put yourself on the child support? And that way you, you never have to worry about that. Because I'm tired of making white folks billionaires. That's probably why. That's probably why I'm tired of paying for judges uh, when they campaign. I'm, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of giving campaign dollars to white judges that don't help black communities. That's probably why. No, I, and and I, I, under, I understand everything you're saying. And again, let, let's go back here. I don't agree with the way child support is administered. I think that it, I think that it contributes to that debtor prison, the, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know that 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 debtor prison theory. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it's a just or right system. That 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 that's not it. And we can have a whole show on the critique of it. But at the end of the day, we know that as men, if we have children and we're not married to the mother, at some point the child support folks is going to come knocking at our door. And it's better to it's better for you to stay ready than to get ready. And, and, and before the child support comes, this is the advice I give the men: make sure you check the rules in your state because in yeah. Texas, Louisiana, all southern states, you can do this. Just go pick your kids up, take them to the park, spend a whole day with them, and never take them back to the mom. And then you have then she has to fight to get custody of the children. Exactly, yeah. black man. I agree with that. I think that should go happen a lot kids. of occasions. Go I, I think that kids. should happen. But um, I I understand what both of you are saying. I, I still I do think though, uh, black man is accountable when you go when you take responsibility for your kids right. on your own. When somebody has to make you do it, then that lends to consequences because you don't want to do it. But if you're doing it, it is accountable. But now, black man in my state, I don't think that the um. I don't think they make money off of child support because <laughs> what we pay directly goes directly to the child. Oh, okay. I, I, this now, is, that's, just, that's just here. Now I've heard about yeah. Texas. I've heard about Texas, <laughs> but, but here it, I don't, I have to check into it, but we only paid what the order was and it went straight to the, you know, in, in Texas, the mama getting 
Oh no, this, the, those checks. We, I could have written the checks directly Jim to the mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other seventy. Guess where it's going? Campaign dollars. Wow. Judges. And you know what? It goes into. I'm sorry. It goes in. And if anybody want to go Google this, it's all. It's, it's it's public record. It goes into the retirement fund for government officials. Wow. So when they I retire, they're it. retiring on the on the child support money. I wouldn't doubt any part. I wouldn't dare put myself on a child support in Texas. Right. Oh. Texas is is the truth because I just read something the other day that the Texas governor put into place, and I said, "Why in the world does he have his business?" And what was it? it was the craziest law? Oh, he he been signing up some stuff. Ooh, I, so but wait a minute, this so one was real crazy. What was it? It was real. Whoa, real like what? Yeah, he. I can't remember. I can't remember. Year. But you look it up. I can tell you in a minute. It was just recently too. Real, real, real out there. Way out there. He was like, "What in the world does he have to do with that?" But anyway, easy money. Yeah. Okay, so okay, so we understand that some people were blaming the woman because maybe because she got aggressive and she should have de-escalated the situation, left the situation long. I understand exactly what you're saying. Now, what else would you like to add? That man never that man never should have put his hands on that woman. No, right. Sure. Once he put that hand once he put his hands on that woman, all bets are off for what happens next. You can't control how someone responds to your disrespect. Okay. So if that man just walks away, doesn't put his hands on that woman, have a nice night. We're not even talking about it. Mm -hmm. And 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 it it it's it it does kind of bother me a bit that more men aren't that resolute on it. Like I understand that everything is in black and white, but it it seems pretty clear that the man was the aggressor. The man rah rah. He said, "You you you say something else. Oh my dead homies, I'm I'm gonna hit you." And he cashed that check, and unfortunately, uh, it, it came back void. Yeah, it, it's it's we got to get back to the point where men are men, and, and when and when that woman had a smart mouth like that, uh, you know what? I have a different taste right now. I don't want a damn hot dog. I want Burger King, and I'm gonna <laughs> walk out get in the car, and I'm gonna drive over to Burger King and give me a number two easy mayo, no, you know, whatever, and get what you're gonna get at Burger King, and damn them hot dogs, because like I, I tell my son this all the time. Matter of fact. I told my son this last night, right? He's 16 as he's growing up. I keep having little small side conversations with him. And I said, when a woman raises her voice or she gets aggressive with you, what, what do we do? Daddy, I got to walk away. Yes, absolutely. I say, now, if she chases you and puts her hands on you, what do you do? He said, daddy, I'm quick enough to get away from her. Son, if she threatens your life, what do you do? He said, I have to do what I have to do. Right. right, and that's it. And this is what you, we have to teach our sons. The world is different now. Women are not backing down from men no more. They're just not. They're not. And so we you, teach you, our sons different. You know what else we're doing too? I think it just came to me. I think that it's hard for women and men to accept women and men as of today. I think that woman felt like surely he gonna leave me alone and just stop. Surely he's not gonna hit me because I ain't hit him. You know what I'm saying? And then he was thinking, surely this woman is going to shut up. Mm. Surely this woman going to shut up. And like the egos kept getting higher and higher or bigger and bigger. And neither person fell back. So now what are we going to do? He threatened to hit her. So he's got to follow through because where do we go next? Right. And, and, and me, I'm a comedian first. I probably would have paid for her food and my food. I would have bought her order and my order and walked out with both of them. See, so black man, you're not a you're not a you're not a degenerate. You yeah, know, yeah, you got I, I would have did something like that, but she and made us sit there or reorder. But my thing, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go on and, because, like I said, like again, going back to what I told my son, you are stronger, you're faster, you're quicker, you're more athletic than these women. Son, you got to understand when you go, when you, when that green light go off in you and you turn red, you, you're, you're going to be damn near unstoppable. So you're mm -hmm. going to, so you have to be able to mind yourself, have some self control. Right. And I'm going to do a show with my son. We're going to sit side by side. We're going to talk about this. But you have to because we have to teach our boys have some self-control because a woman has the key to your sale. And, and when the police come, they're not going to ask you no questions. The, the only thing you're going to hear the police say is watch your head, sir. When they put your ass in the back of their car. You, you know what? And you're right. Black man, not only do you have to teach your son, we have to teach each. I have to teach women. I have to learn myself mm -hmm. and men have to teach men, too. It's just it's just like that, because. It's a different response for this day and time. The woman is responding different. The men are responding different. 
We used to have a lot more patience with each other. Mm -hmm. Like Trey is saying, the egos are now just way above anything that we can ever know. Because this this situation right here, I mean, they were actually fighting over hot dogs or, or, or just hot dog space or something of that nature. And that was should have never been a disagreement. Because, you know, normally it used to be like, yo, go ahead, ma'am, you go ahead in front of me. Or no, 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 you could. I'm, I'm waiting. You go ahead. I already placed my order or whatever the situation is. It's a smile. We fall back and everybody's happy. But somebody ended up losing their life over a hot dog this night. Hey, right. And security boss, even like, OK, so like we said, a man should not hit a woman. A woman should not hit a man. Everybody should keep them hands, their hands to themselves. Right. Even here in Dallas, even here in Dallas, um, they talked about the time gaps between if a woman calls the police on a domestic on a DA, I mean, you know, I'm a domestic violence or DV or whatever mm -hmm. versus a man calling. They said at times within the two is 15 to 18 minute intervals. So if a woman calls, they're immediately on their way. When a man calls, it could take up to 15 minutes. The officers are thinking this shit's a joke. <laughs> a man's getting beat up in his house. <laughs> are, are, either, are, either, are either responding and killing some, deleting somebody. Because exactly. he, he can't run away no more. How, how far can he go? Man. Listen, Listen. yeah, we just can't. Hold on, one more thing, Kira. I'm done. No, fine, you're fine. Do you remember the story with me and you did about a two, two or three months ago where the woman uh, ran the man down in the minivan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And hit the hit the hit the hit the um spectator. End up deleting uh, delete mm -hmm. the spectator, right? Yes, yes. And then what was that man to do? Or the woman in New York? They in the car. She's driving. She goes to hit him. He jumps and survives. He tried to run. She bags up, try to hit him. I mean, hitting buildings, trying to hit him with a car, using a car as a weapon. What is that man to do? If he had a, if he had a firearm, should he have taken her out? Yeah, yeah, if he, yeah, because she was trying to take him out. I mean, I agree with you. There are so many. We have seen so many, and we have seen some that are not justified. But listen, that is the temperature of where we are right now. There is so much sin in this world right now. It's like any one of us that mean good could walk in it just like that and be a part of it, and never intended on even even getting upset that day you yeah. know we were good yeah. we were happy when we left the house so yeah. we got to just be careful and be here, conscious, here lies here lies eric jones <laughs> uh friend loved one and hot dog eater dead loved by everyone <laughs> all right yeah. so easy okay so did you want to add anything else to that because i do i definitely want you to speak to miss priscilla if you have anything you want to add to her My go ahead yeah, um, and and I know that was part of the 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 comments that 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 set my my man you know my my man black man off. But I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, we as men and and you know black man says this a lot. We as men have to be accountable. Yeah, we do. And if we're seeing that something isn't working, so if eighty percent of marriages are ending in divorce that are filed by women. Right. Then we need to do a deep dive and understand what we're what we can do differently as men in order to to reverse that trend. Right. OK, now, I think black men would say that there we, we're having the, the divorce rate is high because women may not be submissive, not that they are being submissive and the men are not able and the men are leading. I think he would say it's just the opposite of way. Yeah, Wouldn't well, you black men? Yeah, absolutely. I think what women are doing is they're saying, wow, I you know I married this man. We're in this nice house. It's real cozy here. Then all of a sudden they start building houses across the street and they're bigger and they're nicer. And that house over there is saying, come on over here to us. We're come on the other side. And women are saying, well, I don't have to live here with him no more. Shit, I make more. I can take my money out this pot. I've been putting it in. I can take care of myself. I don't need him. And that's what they're doing. Women are starting to 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 come to this delusional awakening that men are no longer necessary, and they're leaving their husbands because of that. Uh, and now you have these women going on these um, trips, these girls' trips, and celebrating divorce. Girl, you did it, yes, right? They're celebrating divorce because they think it's a a beautiful thing. But I just want to see them. They're going to tattoo parties and going to Jamaica. And when they get 65, 70 years old, those tattoos are going to look like uh, hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics in Egypt uh, on those bodies. But we, but women are celebrating divorce. They're celebrating single motherhood. They're celebrating. They're all on TV. Ebony K. Williams is on The View saying, and the audience is clapping loud. 
They said, oh, we heard that you want to go into single motherhood and raise a child on your own. She said, yes, I found a, a donor and I'm going to go get inseminated. And then I'm going to be a single mom. And then when the child turned 18, I'll let him meet his daddy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so black man, let me ask this. So going all the way back to, to where you started with, you know, women are, are looking out and they're no longer seeing the value in the, in being married. Well, you, you, hey, you, you put that together. I like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, the question that, that we have to ask is why is that? What, where is the man deficient? What is the man not doing or what is he doing that he needs to stop doing in order for that woman to find value in that man? He's not where she's enough. not filing for divorce. Yeah, he's so, not doing. He's not doing enough. I mean, security boss uh, said. I think you said this, kid, was uh, some weeks uh, ago when we talked about the story uh, where the woman, where the man paid for her college. There you go, black man. I was getting ready to say. And, and he See, paid for. Yeah, yeah, he made it sure she got all the way to get her education. Then when she got her education, saw how much money she was going to be making, she divorced him. He was no longer good enough. He was no longer good enough for. Her. Yeah, the plan was he had whatever he was going to do. I think he was an average earner guy, mm -hmm. and the plan was to put her. To, she said she wanted to go to was it nursing school? I yep, think it was, and he, he supported and her. He supported her, and then she wanted to go back and get her masters, and he mm -hmm. supported that. So she became a, a a six figure earner, and when she done that, she looked back at her man and was like, "You know what? You are not it anymore." She didn't realize that he was it until she got cancer. When yep. she got cancer, she realized that she had made one of the biggest mistakes in her life. And she was mm -hmm. like, it was too late, of course. But that's what black man is saying. That's what we're trying to say is that sometimes this is not a reason. We look for happiness. And then in happiness, we want everything to be blissful, to be to be oh i'm not bored Stunkish. oh i'm traveling i am you know I'm, I'm i'm after something the whole time i'm trying to get some more money i, I want to go on that cruise I, I need to go to bahamas i need a, some red bottoms i need a louis vuitton whatever it's got to be eventful it's got to stroke whatever that feeling is i have or if it's not oh he's boring i've outgrown him mm -hmm. you know you know they're looking for happiness within the mate or their spouse when we should actually find it in us and then look for peace in our spouses. And if, if we actually took the time to do that, we wouldn't get divorced because we would understand that our spouses is not supposed to be everything to us anyway. Joy is a sacrifice. Happiness is selfishness. Let's, let's talk about it. That's what it happiness is. is rooted in selfishness. You yes. absolutely know. And, and easy. I happen to think that that's mostly what breaks up relationships. Exactly. I, I'm going to go all the way out. It is selfishness because uh, you know what? Well, let's make let's make let's make sure we add this. Abuse breaks up a relationship. Okay, we're done. We understand abuse. Some of us can't handle that. Some of us not willing to get the therapy or whatever it takes. Now that's different than domestic violence. Domestic domestic violence says to me, um, he was abusive when I met him, or she was abusive when I met him. I married him anyway, and he been beat my butt, or I've been beating his butt ever since. That's different than your husband. Um, or your wife experiencing something mental and then you and he fighting or him pulling a web. That's two totally different things. Right, to me. right. Each way you find safety. One way you don't marry him. The opposite way you find some safety. This is what I'm saying. I'm talking. I'm not talking about that. We're taking that totally off the table. I'm talking about in just relationships alone. Women and men sitting up there as grown women and men talking about I'm bored. Oh, he doesn't make me happy. I had someone today say this to me. Um, because I said, we talked about this just last week. I said, ladies, go to the spa. I said, do you want him to, what do you, what do you want him to do? You want him to rub your feet? Sometimes he can rub your feet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he needs to kiss you on your head. But if he doesn't have the ability or the time or he's tired and he can't rub your feet, go to the spa. That does not mean that he doesn't love you. He's not affectionate to you. It doesn't mean any of that, anything like that. But if that makes you unhappy, then you have a problem. You're selfish. My question to the person that left me the comment that we don't have time to even um, get in touch with the small things. It's not that. Why about how about this? When that man told you, no, I don't feel like rubbing your feet right now or baby, I'm tired. Did you go to him and ask him, well, is there anything I can do for you? Did you turn around and say, can I do for you? Since you tired, babe, I understand you've been working a lot longer, whatever the situation may be. What can I do for you tonight? No, they don't do that. They'll say, oh, he can't rub my feet. How about that? Look at him. Wow. And then it's done. See, yep. that's, that's how we treat our marriages. And it's then they like, go on social media 
and see her husband making up for cheating on his wife, rubbing her feet, and then he posted online, and then she'll go and say, see, look at Eric over there. Alan rub her feet. No, black man, that ain't, that ain't what they do. They'll go on Facebook or social media, like you said, but they'll put... What would y'all do if y'all been married to a man 10 years Come on, and um, <laughs> you do everything he wants you to do, Talk you about cook it. his dinner, <laughs> you you know, you iron his clothes, you make sure, did I mention I was a stepmom and yeah. then you ask him to rub your feet and he say no, what would y'all do? <laughs> that's yeah. what I decided to do. I'm like, talk are you serious it. right now? You gonna put all this down? <laughs> yeah, talk about it. I want to hear what what would y'all do? <laughs> like, oh, come on, funny. ladies, this is your marriage. What are you doing? Take that to your husband and ask. Tell him how you really feel. You know, because more than likely, it's not about you. It's not that he's trying to get at you. He just don't feel like it. Sometimes we don't feel like it. Sometimes we are tired and we just don't have it for each other. It does. That's not the opportunity for us to be like me, 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 me. It's not that time. Right. It's a time to be like, OK, let me figure out what's going on with you, because I want to make sure you're good. I don't want you to be I don't want Mr. Boss to be sick when he can't get me no water. You get what I'm saying? Right. You know, he can't get my water. Babe, why you can't get my water? What's up? You don't feel good. I don't need to be like, you can't get my dang on water. What is what? This Negro, I got your whole breakfast this morning. You can't get my water. What? It's not like that. See, see, easy. So that's the part right there. We don't know. That's the part we don't know. I happen to think a lot of that breaking easy. up has to do with selfishness. Imagine easy, easy. You going and you did what that guy did. You just, you know, you got a your average earning guy, and your and your wife comes to you with a dream, and you fulfill that dream for her, and you struggle and you work hard and you fulfill it, and then when she gets the job. She tells you, hey, baby, thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. But I just don't think you make enough and I don't want to be with you no more. I'm making more than you now. I, I have to move on in my life and find someone that's on my level financially. Well, what, what's, what's going through your mind, E? So, black man, let, I, I'll, I'll try to draw a parallel for you. <laughs> so, you know how they say when you leave a job and you happen to leave for more money, it's never about the money. Mm hmm. When you leave a job, it's because of how you were treated, of how your manager treated you, how your boss treated you, how your coworkers treated you. You you don't leave a job simply for money. The money mm -hmm. helps. And it's just like in the marriage, like, you know, women are making more money. That's fantastic. That's great. But no woman is sitting here saying to themselves, I make more than him. Let me divorce him. The decision the decision point for, for that woman to leave that man came well before she ever considered the money. So if we go back to the, the foot rubbing example and that woman has washed all the clothes and took care of all the babies, did that one special thing that that man liked the night before. And here she is feet hurting. You know, maybe she twisted her ankle, walking up the stairs, bringing the groceries in for dinner. And she says, hey, baby, can you rub my feet? And he says, nah, go to go to the spa or something like that. And what she really wanted was an opportunity to spend some time with her man, talk about her day and get her swollen ankle rubbed. And this man can't do that. And she's fulfilling everything else. Then that's where the resentment starts. But what, what man? I, I don't know. If my wife asks me to rub her feet, I'm not going to tell her. No. What man around here just saying, no, I ain't rubbing your feet. He wouldn't. It wouldn't be that way. But it'd be like what Easy said. It may be not a no. It may be like, babe, won't you just go into the spa? I'm tired as heck. Could be something simple as yeah, that. Yeah, I pay for it. Babe. But guess what else? If if it, if the resentment is going to start there, let it instead of the resentment, let it be a conversation. You know, tell your man, hey, look, I really wanted some time with you. Yeah, I asked for you to rub my feet, but I really wanted some time with you also. And I think he can very well hear that now because it sounds like to me because what y'all think differently than we do. You know, y'all use solution based. The solution to the problem was, babe, go to the spa. Simple as that. Right, yeah, but yeah, we're yeah. so emotional. We wanted to spend time, but we put it on our feet. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We got to we got to do better in communication. You don't you don't become unhappy because of that. That's that's just something. Look, we got to learn how to communicate, baby. That's and all one, that is. Right. And one thing is for sure. One thing is for sure. A man cannot read your mind. You can walk around the house all day and look, give him that look like you want him to do something. You need to speak up and say, hey, baby, listen, I was coming in with the groceries today. I twisted my ankle. It's sore and it's swollen. I need you to rub it for me. Don't don't go in the house expecting him. Oh, he'll see me and he'll know what's wrong. 
And oh, look, he'll look down at your ankle and be like, baby, your ankle's swollen. Keep oh, going. Here, here. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta speak up. Yeah, hey, baby, your ankle looks swell. How you doing today? And just keep on going. Yeah, you yeah. have Listen, ju Judge Toller said, y'all got to tell these men oh, what you her. want. Yep, I do I too. Her. Got to tell these men what you want. And it's just that simple. Easy. <laughs> Listen, uh, uh, Gilbert say, uh, tell Easy Money she got her big back rub last night. <laughs> 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 her big back rub. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, just, it's just that simple. But somebody was like, you know, I just think the expectation of your spouse, who is who's a person, who's a human, yeah. is sometimes way too high when you can communicate about some things and still get it done. You know what I mean? No, um, I hundred percent agree. And and I and and to your point, you know, it, it really is those simple things that start the resentment that lead down that path to divorce. One one day it's you didn't rub my feet, the next day you didn't kiss me when you left for work in the morning. The next time it's you left something in the shower and it builds up. And so to your point, SB, a simple conversation can resolve the majority of the issues that we see. Because by the time that we see the issue, you, you know, clothes are on the yard, you know, get out. The police are being called, you know, and it really could have been resolved from a simple conversation about a misunderstanding that happened over a foot getting rubbed and that's where the marriages are lost and that's where that's where it's important that we as married men fight for our marriages every day even sometimes right. you may not feel like rubbing the feet but you know that if she's at like in in, in my situation and i use myself as an example my old lady asked me to rub her feet we don't do feet so like if she's asked me to rub her foot that's a big deal i'm like you know i, I i'm not like I said, i'm not really a foot dude but for her she want me. To, she she's asking me to do it. I'll go ahead and do it. But guess what? If you say, "Babe, here's one hundred and fifty dollars. Go have you a spa day," you, you, she's gonna be like, "No, I want you to rub my feet. Absolutely not." She's taking that hundred and fifty, and she's going down to that spa to get that full body, well, ankles, and come feet on. included. And she's come gonna on. be like, "My man did this." And she's gonna tell everybody at work that's what you did. And you're gonna send her to that resort that's nearby to get that full body, one fifty, two hundred dollar massage and it's going to be great it ain't going to be no issue you still address the issue but i think what happens is we get so caught up in you know i don't know how to say it y'all but you know how you just keep in score i think uh, christopher said this we keep score and that also we have the expectation is just out of this world we expect for like you just said what, what was that what was that you said before the bathtub what did you mention we get have resentment for what? What what chore was that? Oh, it was what was it? It was um, uh, rubbing feet. It was uh, not you know leaving stuff in the shower. It was not kissing me before you left there in the you morning. Go, not kissing me. Not kissing me. Okay, that's the what. That's this is a big one. So you in your mind, lady, are saying my husband didn't kiss me, but did you go kiss him? How simple? Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Because because women some kind of way I don't know where we got it from. We actually think that men should be the aggressor in all things, especially if it's sexual. Anything intimate, y'all just need to do it, all of it by yourself. You, you, you got to run our engines. Y'all got to do it. And if you're not doing it, it's your fault. I, 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 I don't want to hear my, nothing my, you got to say. <laughs> my grandma always said, everything easy until you make it hard. Listen, like y'all got to be the aggressor. And then guess what? If y'all don't do it, he don't want me no more. Yep. But wait, but wait a minute. Did you try to Girl, he don't love me. He don't come kiss me. You get your ass out that bed, stop snoozing the clock, and get up with your man, and you go kiss him. How about, that? How about that? Did that solve yeah. that problem, right? Yes. Yeah. I just think that women, I just think that we have this thing that men are supposed to be this this way. And, and if if we just stay in that mode, it will be that way. That's the expectation of the man. And if y'all don't teach us nothing else, if y'all don't come to us, bring us close and be like, look, babe, you could kiss me sometime. Uh, whatever it is, the problem is or whatever, then we're going to always think that way. Because the woman, the, the woman, the wife that was trained by her mother it was that way for them. The man was the aggressive. Only thing the woman did was drop the hanky on the floor or on the ground and everything else the man did. So yeah. that's that's the mode that we were taught in. Yep. So how many you know. marriages have ended in divorce because a man couldn't read a mind? Let that soak in for a minute. 
I, I can't. How I'm many really years? Blaming. Who? How? How many years have women held in things that they wanted from their husband? They want their husband to figure it out on their own without them just going to have a conversation. I mean, you never know exactly what because we are always we always deal with the externals. You know, we'll say they broke up because the external reason. We won't never get to the actual reason why mm. they broke up because sometimes you can't put a finger on it. It's mostly probably just what we're talking about now. It was selfishness. We won't say it was money, but, you know, we'll say it's money, but it actually wasn't money. Money was the byproduct. It was actually right. the selfishness. You took too much money and you spent it. You get what I'm saying? Because you were being selfish on yourself and not about the family. But I won't say that you were selfish. I would say you spent it was money. You know, right. we always say money, things of those natures, that nature, because we'll never get to the bottom of it. You know, we'll never get to the issue. And because we just can't take the time to have those conversations, we're totally thinking, well, he ought to know better. You know, he ought to know better. I know he saw that paper on the floor. What the heck is he doing stepping over it? Now, I've done that myself. I'm like, Mr. Balls, you didn't see that piece of paper you just stepped over? He was like, no, nah, but I didn't even see it. I said, okay, that's innocent enough. He was honest and said he didn't see it. I'm like, well, heck, I don't know how. We just picked it up and put it in the trash can. But that's the, just the difference between men and women. Yep. Me see, and I don't, I don't let that go. Oh, yeah, I'm letting it go. What, what did you say, Black Man? I... I, I I told my wife that one day, but the, with the kids, every time the kids have a disagreement, she in there, what's going on? I said, baby, you got to stop acting like you're on law and order. God damn, them kids, let them get it. They'll work it out. Law you, and order. It, everything is an interrogation. So who did it? Who had it last? Who had it first? Who was sitting there first? I said, baby, get, get out of there. I bet, I bet it is like that though with kids because you you wanna you yeah. wanna teach that lesson to whomever don't drop it off don't leave it for somebody else. See, see the difference yeah. between us. See the difference. I don't we have. have they're in there arguing over a baseball cap or something. And I don't give a damn about that. They'll figure it out. She in there. Who had the hat first? Who was it? Where did you get it from? I, I ain't got time for all that. I ain't doing no interrogation. That's exactly. That's Hell exactly. no. So we, we definitely have to learn each other in marriage. And we also now figured it out that we have to learn each other, even random people we don't know, right. to respect the fact that we don't know how they come in the day. We don't know how they feel about women. We don't know if they're good and a good mental state or whatever. Right. Just keep your mouth closed. Do what you got to do. Better, for, better Matter of fact, go to drive through. <laughs> don't even bother. But listen, easy. I did not hear, I don't think yet. Okay, so your point of view is that she is correct with women are the leaders and men are underneath women. She didn't say men should be submissive to women, but is that so, where we're going with that? So where I'm coming from with that, so obviously I, I know what the word says. We, we're not going to relitigate that piece of it. But I think there is something to the dynamic of a woman leading in some aspects Due to the fact that men, I mean, you know, men kind of are programmed to follow instructions. That's the reason that men are in factories and men work construction. You know, men put together the blueprints, right? So where I'm coming from with that, and that's why I say, that's why I say it's, in, it's in specific scenarios. So you think about like a trip, right? The, va the vacation. Who usually plans the vacations in your family? It's your wife. Not mine. And no. what, black, black man? No. <laughs> You plan the vacations? What? I can tell my wife can come in here right now, baby. This year, I already know where we're going. Where we going? Dominican Republic. What? Absolutely. I right, man, listen, when it comes to vacations, hell no. Man, my wife can she could pick something like want to go to Vegas. Cool. The next year I'll pick. You know, we just go back and forth. I mean, you know. Mr. Yeah. Boss always plans our vacations. Yeah. I'm just... And and the airline and mm -hmm. the Ubers and the hotels. I do not deal with that stuff. Man. Mr. Boss, send me a get, look, Mr. Boss, give me a sound effect because I know you ain't gonna say nothing. He's talking about peace. <laughs> he yeah. does it. He does. He's I'm... a person that does it. I never, I don't think I ever have done that. Wow. Mm -mm. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Because I'm I'm hearing what you're saying, and I'm thinking my answer or my little tidbit I want to add to that is I can see where you're going with this but that's not natural order that is just um oh god I hate to say it but my men being lazy and allowing it to happen it, it's nothing natural about it that's that's that happy life or happy wife happy life type thing you know the woman that's what that that's what that equals you right. know the woman's doing everything she's leading everything and the man is just basically having his meals and everything perfect for him when he comes at home and he's 
quiet. I think we did a video on this a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago, where they want the men to be silent. A black man, was that you or me? They no, like them no, quiet. That was black man. Black man, they like them quiet. That was you, black man. Yeah. I think that's kind of leading towards that. And I'm going to um, Marcus's super chat. Marcus said this type of woman. Let me read that super chat. And I agree with him totally. And Marcus says women like her are dangerous and company and comparing her to KS is a big insult. I, did, I didn't do that, but Came somebody right. did. Yeah, that's terrible. Somebody did. Thank you, Marcus, if I out super chat. Um, she can she can say that women can lead, but women's nature, uh oh, will rescind it. You know what? Um, she can say whatever she wants, but we know that women are not supposed to be in a leadership role. Even in the Bible, we're not supposed to be in a leadership role. She knows that, but I do think this is the wrong type of fuel to give women, um, because it takes women out of their natural order. And then what is the expectation? What what do they think they're supposed to be doing? Because again, we don't have the bill. We don't have the logic. We don't have everything necessary to pull off total leadership. And, right. and that's why we fail. That's why we can't, you know, lead our men, our boy children. That's right. why um, we need assistance. That's why God gave Adam a helpmate mate, and it was us. So this is a terrible message, y'all. This is not, in my opinion, I know, e Easy, what do you feel about this actual message, honestly? So I don't agree, like I said, I don't agree with everything that she said, but I, I have seen a number of women who take responsibility where the men, I, I guess you said it, you, you said it pretty good, where the men are just being lazy or they just don't want to do it, or it's that weaponized incompetence thing, where a woman will take the lead where she has to. And to your point, you know, I mean, you called it right out. It, it's essentially the men, you know, being lazy and not being in that leadership role. Right. Yeah. So it's the not, man has abdicated the role, essentially. Well, yeah, but, but it's not like a, a natural order, though. She labeled it. She because, you know, what, yeah, I, that's I, where I push back. I'm not saying it's a natural. Oh, order. right. Like yeah. that's. Yeah. But what? But, you know, to that point, women are pretty good at the planning portion of things. I don't plan. Mm. I don't plan. You don't I, do I, any planning? I, no, I think I think in my marriage, I'm more so the closer and my husband's the planner. Interesting. I think in, in our relationship now, and, and that comes through straight up delegation. Now, if he tells me to do something, I do it. You get what I'm saying? But he's the one that has the plan. He 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 can get he can find anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's that one. I don't I, I can't take the time to do it. I'm like, no. I don't have time for that, you know, right. but he's the one that he will find it. He can find anything and do anything he wants to. I told y'all that years ago when he yep. found out that he could fix something, just, just having the right tools, I could not slow him down or stop him from that point on. No, I'm doing it. Give me a uh, YouTube university, the right tools. I got it. And since then, there's nothing that he can't plan, fix, build or anything. I mean, you'd be like, I'd be like, babe, you'd be like, no, nah, I got it. And I'd be like, okay. I don't even bother to try to, you know, sometimes I'd be like, no, babe, we're not young folks like that no more. But he is, is for years, that's been the person that he is. So yep, that's what I'm talking about. I, so, I don't. So that, I, that that leads me to another question. Who who plans the, the supper menus and, and what you're going to eat for the week? Who plans that? Oh, shit. I go to the store. Well, I cook too. So we're in my family with, when, with all these kids, absolutely. Like on the days like today, um, when I do the show, my wife's cooking right on tuesday i do a show my wife's cooking wednesday and thursday i take days off right because my network's still running on those days with other two other shows right so wednesday and thursday i'm cooking right friday my wife cooks saturday and sunday i'm on the grill or i'll take the kids out somewhere and let them eat right so it's a balance it we just balance that thing out um, look at you all right black man can i can i got a confession i got a confession a yeah. confession <laughs> so when 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 I first started kind of getting hip to to who you were and the networks and all that, mm -hmm. I had I in my mind I had this picture of you as like this super traditional dude, right? Provide and protect. I got the strap. I lead. I do this, right? And, and I'm there, got to. But you, but you're talking about balance, right? I mean that that yeah. takes a degree of partnership. Like if yeah. you're cooking some days and your wife is cooking some days, that's that that that's that's an agreement you guys came to, right? Right. Well, not basically agreed. One day I was like, hey, babe, listen, I know I'm doing the shows on Monday, Tuesday, Friday. The days that I'm not doing the shows, 
I cook. She said, huh? You you gonna do what? I said, baby, I'll cook. I'll cook Wednesday and Thursday. And on Saturday, I'll put some on the grill or cook on Saturday and uh, we'll probably go out and take the kids out on Sunday. She said, for real? I said, yeah. No problem. She, she be laid out on Wednesday and Thursdays. <laughs> you know what? Y'all got kids at home. Y'all gotta cook. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me yes. and Mr. Balls do meal prep. And we do Ooh, whatever lovely. we want to do. We don't care. Oh, nothing about that sounds so nice. Secured about you making me sound like I'm in prison. You're making me sound like I'm in prison. Listen, uh, my yeah, I'm telling you. She gone. I got one, I two. Don't know. Ooh, I got five more to go to get out of here, Security Boss. I can't. Uh, listen, we use Freshly. Freshly is our meal prep. I've been thinking about doing another fellow locally. I forgot to tell Mr. Boss about that. But Freshly, we do Freshly for meal prep. Yeah, every meal is 500 calories, no more. And they send them to you like a little freezer by UPS. And wow, you get, really? Yep, you get nine. We, we pay for nine meals. And they come in, like I said, with these little ice packs around them. And they give you nine meals. You pop them in the microwave for three minutes. And you're ready to eat them all natural food. No, Like I said, none of them are over 500. Well, let me say it different. Those are the ones that with comfort, they're like 525, 525 calories. Each meal is five, right at 500 calories. Wow. Hmm. It's, it, tastes, it tastes pretty good. It tastes okay. Yeah, it do. But you know how you you know how you be wanting some stuff. Yeah. So you want to? They got meatloaf. I want to add my own barbecue sauce, which just oh, added another hundred calories. Additives. Oh yeah. yeah. Then I want some salt and pepper. And you want you you know when you had your potato, I want the cheese and the sour cream. But right. they, they they supply the potato, you know. Right. And the broccoli. They have steak. They have Ooh. you know they have everything you can just look it up freshly. Oh, um, and we also uh, do whatever. We don't, food is not an issue for us now. Okay. But when I was, when we was young, we had a child in the house. We had to, we used to actually go out one day a week, which would be Wednesday. We used to eat pizza every Wednesday night. Other than that, I cooked all the time. I was the cook. We tried to let Mr. Boss cook one time and we said, no more. Never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. Listen, okay? he, used to, he was laughing like, you. I'm laughing with you. He okay. put this meal together and we was like, what is y'all? It was some mac and cheese with some with some um sausage links inside of it. We was like, babe, where 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 did you get this from? He was like, I don't know. I just I was like, don't do it. I don't even know what he got. I mean Wait, he cut sausage up inside the macaroni. That's yeah. how we good, Mr. Boss. I, he I thought he, he was Boss. making his own cuisine. I was like, Did you see somebody do this or something? He was like, No, I just thought I would do it, put it together. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. It was like, okay, it's, you're done. Mr. Boss. Cancel it. Mr. Boss. I tell the story all the time. He just sitting there looking like. Hey. We, hey, this is dish. It's called Balsaroni. No, what did we call it? He had, he had a little name for it. But we was like, don't do it no more ever again. Oh, Mr. We, Boss, we I would have ate it. I would have ate it, Mr. Boss. I would have ate it. Yeah. I would have. Oh yeah. my he God. ate it. He ate it. He ate it fine. But I was just like, I'm not sure where we're going with this. <laughs> so I just like, you know, cooking is not for you. And we left it alone. And that's it. We, I'm serious. He cooked one meal. And so, and see, Mr. Boss can eat breakfast all day long. So y'all listen, he good. I ain't even worried. But he mac and, cheese, mac and cheese and sausage. I have no idea where he got that from. And sometimes you do stuff for your children. I'll say this, then we go back to what we was talking about. Sometimes we, I do stuff for my kids that they, they like, but I don't. Like, you know, like I, I do this thing called a slutty cheesecake. Mm-mm. A slutty <sighs> cheesecake. With the graham crackers on the bottom, with the oh, Oreos in the good. middle. With the yeah. Cream the uh-huh. Ooh. My kids be tearing it up. I ain't never even tasted it. I just do it because they like it. I, I've heard of that, but not called a soy cheesecake. I think that's the one that Mr. Boss like too. It's this lady. Do you have to put it in the refrigerator and it's like ready yep. to eat? Yep. I think I know what you're talking about, mm-hmm. but yeah, mm-hmm. I don't. Anyway, my kids but, tear it up. Yeah, but since then we were done. We're done with the cooking, and we don't bother him with that no more. Now you know, freshly, and that's it. I'm tired of you talking about Mr. Boss. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, listen, y'all. That's been the only time he's ever, ever tried to cook from that Mr. point. Boss. And I think he got upset because I kind of like, I'm not eating that. Send I wouldn't eat it, y'all. I how much send you a picture? Yeah, this this has picture. been at least 20 years ago. Oh, dang, Mr. Boss. Wow. Two, two it's 20 years ago. Story. And I said, no more. It's okay. Don't worry about it. He was like, you didn't even eat it. I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess I post has been like, babe, you did a great job. Where did you get the rest of me? Listen, from that day on, he was like, I'm not doing it ever again. And he has never, wow. never cooked. Mr. Boss, no, I got wait, you wait, Mr. Boss. Don't let me tell a complete lie. He will cook on the grill. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he'll grill steaks and burgers and turkey burgers. He'll do that. But as far Mr. as looking, Mr. Mr. Balls, what kind of grill you got? The, you got the green egg over there? Mm -mm. We got a what kind of grill is that? It's a. Is I'm gonna it, tell you something that happened to us during COVID. Our grill caught on fire. The grill itself burnt up. <laughs> I I ain't never in my life. I don't know. Y'all didn't do the Mister move, did you? Go and put kerosene in the damn grill, did you? No, no, no. The grill in the inside caught on fire. It, I mean, I'm literally, it went to blaze. I didn't think grills could catch on fire. Oh, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They, 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 it could be grease from the last time you did it. Got, yep. got, got coated on, that, on the inside of that grill, and it catch that, that grease. is gone. I can see it right now, but I can't tell you the name of it. But it, it burnt up, y'all. It caught on fire. But they came and got it and, and fixed it all up and brought it back. <laughs> I was like, this is the, the grill caught on fire, y'all. It was blazing. And Mr. Boss, he was in the house because he's one of them kind of cook that a cook and then walk away. And I was like, um, I think we need to call the fire department. And he was like, what? I was like, the fire department. <laughs> was like, I was like, don't open it. The fire department. It was bellowing black smoke. He didn't Man. believe me. He opened it up. Fire went everywhere. I was like, you don't believe yeah, me. I would have had, yeah, I definitely, I definitely would have had flour everywhere. Um, no, I we didn't know. I, I honestly didn't know a gas grill would catch on fire. Oh, I didn't absolutely. know. Yeah. It did. I know now, but it did. And you definitely want to stay away from that tank if it catch fire because oof. we. It, he turned it off really quick. He turned off the gas really quick, and it didn't catch on. It, none of that happened, but I was just shocked. We was like, the grill catch on fire, you know? So we was. Crazy. So, Mr. Boss, give me a sound effect if it's just true, Mr. Boss. Do you use pellets, wood, or charcoal? None of it. Total gas. Total gas. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Boss, when you start, I'm telling you, you need to get your green egg. Invest in one. I'm telling you. I it like those. Change your life. Green egg. I like those. Oh. I've seen them at the hardware store. We might have to do that. I did not know it, though. But anyway, y'all, listen, mm -hmm. it's time for us to go. I I love talking to you all. And we done got on some crazy stuff now. I am told y'all we done burnt up the grill and everything. But, Black Man, I got to tell y'all this. I got to give oh. everybody an update because, Black Man, I don't think you know this. Oh, wow. But last Monday when I was with y'all up here... And we had our 730 show. Mm -hmm. Y'all should have told me that my whole house was um, leaking water. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. What happened? My whole house was leaking water. And when we went downstairs at 12, what time it was like a little bit after 12, the whole down, not the whole, half of my house was underwater. Um, and we was up here, didn't hear a thing because like our restroom upstairs, some kind of way, the water start running in the toilet. And it ran for four hours. Damn. So, you know, it was storming. Y'all know it was raining really hard here. So we, did, we didn't, even, it, hey, it was raining. Didn't think nothing of it. But when oh. we got downstairs, it was raining downstairs too. How much damage did it cost? Uh, we, they haven't given us a cost estimate. But today they have brought the Pure system in and they have cut away all of the um, ceiling and it's upstairs and downstairs. So it, we thought initially it was maybe like one big room affected. It ended up being about five rooms that are affected. So but the whole know, kitchen so, and all of that area. So you're going to have a whole HGTV moment. You got to get new floor. I got to get new floor. The whole yeah, floor. Yeah. New, yeah. Oh, wow. I am wow. getting ready to be blessed. <sighs> I was like, yep. what? They got to do all the floors. They got to do all the cabinets, all the ceilings. Um, I think they said they can save the countertops. But that's and then the bathroom and then let me tell you how dumb we are. We ran downstairs, right? And the water still ran after we turned the water off. It still ran through the ceiling for at least eight to ten hours. Cause Damn. They had, <laughs> yeah. And then Mr. Bob, they took the ceiling, they took the, the stuff out today, the ceiling out today, and he said it was still wet today. We still yep. got all that humidifier in yep. there today, I'm and that's been y'all a week ago. That was coming. That mold right around the corner. Yeah, we had we didn't get we didn't have any mold because they put that system in there fairly quickly. I think it was right. in there by that Tuesday yeah. or that Wednesday. Don't waste no time. Yeah. So we didn't have that problem, but y'all, it was still water today. That's been seven days ago. Yep. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it took so, us about ten days to get the water out uh, for our house because we had the same thing. It was a toilet on the on the, I guess <laughs> technically third level, the upstairs, 
and it ran to the first level, ran into the basement, and it was bad. But it's it's beautiful now because we were able to get rid of some of the flooring and some of it I hated. Like I hated the flooring in our kitchen, and oh. it's it it's nice now. Like it's I, I really like our floor. So you're you're definitely about to get blessed. Yeah, absolutely. So the thing is, so um, yeah, well, I want the same flooring. So this is gonna have to redo them. And then upstairs, though, the upstairs bathroom and the restrooms upstairs and the bedroom upstairs have to, one of the bedrooms upstairs has to be redone. So it, it was crazy, y'all. We was up here talking to y'all <laughs> to midnight Amen. and hold <laughs> just running water. I was like, this has got to be the crazy. I didn't even know that could happen, y'all. I had no idea. So y'all pay attention to your toilets upstairs to make sure they're all or in the off position, or if it breaks, it's not running constantly or whatever, because that water is going somewhere. I'm Telling you. All right, Black Man, shout out to shows for tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Tomorrow, Black Man and Filter Network, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. The title of the show tomorrow is Sit Your Ass Down If You're Not Doing the Work. And this show is going to be based on our men stepping up and doing what they Email me and I'll email you the link so you can join us on tomorrow's work. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much. It's been a great show. We appreciate you all in the comment section all the time. Anyone that's in the live, we appreciate you. Easy. We enjoy and appreciate your pushback, even though me and black men got something for you every time. That, that's all right. I love y'all for that. <laughs> we love your pushback, though. We yeah, appreciate absolutely, you. Brother. Absolutely. And thank you so much for being here. For you I'm other, so let me see. I don't know if Wednesday but night is going to be cool well, season or not, but we will probably see you on Wednesday. But until then, make sure you go join black men tomorrow night because you need to sit your down. Y'all know what he said. <laughs> until then, y'all have a good night. Bye bye. <laughs> Back for this started. You want the love, I don't got it. You screaming, stay, please don't go. Don't think it's in me to listen to foe. It's so different with distance we roam into zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door. Instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though you're screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts say too are scared to usher off Sorry, Mom, I just thought you were my world, now you're not and I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Think about what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take a in my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars Reading poets at sunset It's funny how love can fall out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist this bliff and laugh and relax Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reasons So I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't say No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.